They gonna love me for my ambition. Club Ambition Podcast Cap. We are back again. Episode 129. Get ready for a classic one. You already know the vibe. Now wife a bitch who live her life for likes from Babe, you know you bad as fuck. Just how I like them. But I be putting that shit on my body. She think that I'm New Swifty album dropping soon. Baby, don't pipe him up. Baby, don't wife you up. Buddy, he's not the bleak. It's gonna be a hot summer around. This bitch be singing my song. He's tight. That's why he be biting us. I'm trying to fuck in that pussy all night. I know this shit tight as fuck. You let a bro nigga hit like ill. Bitch, only good for a kill. Baby, get down on your knees. Baby, yeah, you know the drill. Baby, you know you a skis. Hit the shit, don't need a pill. You know you ain't what I need. Baby, yeah, keep it real. Bitch, I ain't spinning no blocks. Once you block, you block for life. Bitch, you lost your spot. Don't mind the bitch, but it right. And she play a part. Once a nigga leave your life, it's gonna leave a mark. And you'll never forget. And you'll never get over it. Baby, I'm working the lamb. Yeah, the trunk with the motorist. Yes, sir. We are here. We are back again. This is Club Ambition Podcast. Hit the fucking, the, one of those buttons, those, those fucking bomb buttons. What's that button? The horns? Hit a couple horns. We are in this bitch. I am Sound, the weekly host. You already know the vibes. We got the co-host extraordinaire, Noel in the building, holding it down right here. Um, Ready to talk some ish. We got, no, um, I almost called him Noel again. We got Marloon, aka Playboy Cardi's number one hater. Um, in the building, holding it down, fresh That's off a of birthday weekend. How was the birthday? How you don't, feel now? Dirty, 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 dirty. How was dirty, 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 dirty feel? Dirty, dirty. It wasn't dirty. Mmm, too clean. It was too clean. It was too clean. It wasn't dirty. <laughs> Disappointing. Disappointing. <laughs> Listen, I was promised. I'm not even gonna say mm. what I was promised. We're gonna get you dirty soon. No diddy. Um, we are back. Uh, shout out to the Spanish <laughs> podcast. Make sure to check it out when my father El Poca drops every Sunday, every week, and we drop a new episode. Make sure to check that out. Also, this episode is sponsored by ProblemGamblingServices.com. March, you know, this might be, is it the last? I think next week might be the last episode in March. Um, but March is the Problem Gambling Awareness Month. And just like that, it's already March in Rhode Island. And yes, that does mean that March Madness is here. But on top of that, in case you didn't know, it's the National Problem Gambling Awareness Month. And if you're looking for a way to check if you possibly have a gambling problem, take the matter into your own hands and visit ProblemGamblingServices.com and click on the self-assessment and fill it out. Once you click on the self-assessment option, there's going to be three versions of a self-assessment test that you can take yourself. One of them being nine yes or no questions, ranging from have you bet more than you could really afford to lose? So also, have you felt that you might have a problem yourself with gambling at all? If you answer no to all the questions, you gamble with no negative consequences. If you answered yes to one or two questions, you may experience a low level of problems with few or no identified negative consequences. An option being the brief biosocial gambling screen. Three vital yes or no questions, such as, during the past 12 months, have you become restless, irritable, or anxious when trying to stop or cut down on gambling? Or, during the past 12 months, have you tried to keep your family and friends from knowing how much you have gambled? Answering yes to any one of these questions means that the person is at risk for developing a gambling problem. Also, there's a problem gambling severity index. This is a Canadian version of the self-assessment, using a scoring scale from 0 to 3 to answer each question, 0 being never, and three being almost always. After answering the nine questions, you're going to total your score at the end, and the higher the score, the greater the risk that your gambling is a problem. All three of these self-assessments are available right now. Go check them out and fill them out yourself at problemgamblingservices.com. Happy Problem Gambling Awareness Month. This message was brought to you by the Rhode Island Lottery. Also, we want to shout out again, uh, we are mentoring Phoebe, a foreign exchange student from Indonesia. She has a new podcast we're helping her with. It's called Indausa. Make sure to check it out. And we have a giveaway from the future album reaction. We're giving away a skateboard. Shout out to my boy Shane, Triple Nine Fever, at Triple Nine Fever. And the winner is, round of applause, <laughs> at Four The Phobic. At Four The Phobic is the winner. At Four The Phobic, we're going to contact you. You are the winner of this one of one first future uh, album, We Don't Trust You, customized skateboard. And. Yeah, let's get this podcast on the road. Uh, a couple of Rhode Island stories to cover real quick before we get into the, the Diddy and the Kendrick Lamar Civil War. First off, uh, unfortunate news in Middletown, Rhode Island, police are searching for a 17-year-old boy. He's been missing since Saturday night. Owen Cameron, he was last seen 7 p.m. leaving Anthony Seafood on Aquinec, uh, Aquinec Avenue, on food 
I think they met for food. He was getting food probably. He was wearing a navy blue uh, Anthony Seafood shirt, dark colored pants, and a ball cap. Anyone with information uh, is asked to contact the Middletown Police at 401-846-1144. That's right. A teenage boy <laughs> is missing in Rhode Island. He's been missing for a couple days, and they are looking for him. Hopefully, he is found. Hopefully, everything's all right. We want to, you know, send the condolences to the family. God forbid this happens to anyone in our families. This is horrible to have someone missing for so long. Um, hopefully, the, the actual teenager ends up coming up and being found. Speaking of being found, again, in the past week, this has been now the third body in a Providence River has been found in the past two months. There's, there's another body being found in another river in Providence. This time has happened again. I believe in the Providence River in the East Bay uh, pi- uh, bike path, uh, so kind of near East Providence, when, let me see, there was a man that was discovered alongside the shoreline of the Providence River when someone was working on the East Bay bike path. According to police, uh, the, the, his death wa- does not seem suspicious at this time. Examiners are working to identify him and determine the cause of death still. Uh, the investigation is underway. His body was found washed ashore the East Providence uh, shoreline Thursday night. Why are there bodies that keep popping up in these Providence rivers? Are they all tied together? The coincidence is kind of weird. Are pe- who, what is going on? You know, what, what people think they're going to keep getting away with just throwing bodies in these rivers? Like, are they watching too many, um, what's it called, murder mystery documentaries or murder mystery shows? I mean, they could be lazy. What's going on? What's, what's really happening with these rivers? <laughs> Niggas be lazy, bro. You can't. You cannot go in these rivers in the summer. Think about it. You ever watch Breaking Bad that first season when they tried to dispose of the body <laughs> and he melted that shit and he fucked up? Oh my <laughs> and god! And it went through the ceiling, bro. It's mad hard to get rid of a body, bro. Listen, that is that is that is crazy. Uh, also, uh, uh, yeah, lawmakers in Rhode Island right now are looking to decriminalize. They want to decriminalize decriminalize possessing small amounts of hard drugs in the state. Noel sent me over this story. is breaking. Uh, the Rhode Island House Judiciary Committee heard testimony on Thursday about the legis- legislation. Governor Dan McKee signed off in 2021 a bill that reclassified possession of small amounts of hard drugs like heroin, cocaine, and fentanyl down to misdemeanors. The effort was to help treat people with drug addictions and not prosecute them, allegedly. However, a misdemeanor is still consider uh it's still a criminal offense obviously um according to the bill the possession uh would be a hundred dollar fine for the first offense so imagine that potentially if passed this bill can make make people in rhode island be caught with heroin cocaine hard drugs and just get a small fine of a hundred (laughs) dollars right oregon is the only other state in the nation with a law uh like this and it has since It passed three years ago. There's been an explosion of public drug use in Oregon. You walk around Oregon and you see people publicly using cocaine, hard drugs, because it's just a small fine. So what is going on? They're trying to make Rhode Island a a drug state? I don't know about this. I I personally don't think this is going to help. <clears throat> drug abuse. Now, if any professionals want to comment in the, in the comments below, yeah, any professional let us know. Drug users, um, let us know. This sounds like a horrible fucking idea. I I would just say because my my sister, I mean me and my sister talk a lot about this a lot because I've been around drug users and then she deals with like the prison system, um, and like you know how do you deal with crimes instead of just arresting someone, putting them in jail? My nigga, if you're on drugs, jail is not for you. Like that is the worst option. That is the worst scenario possible. Because, like, I've seen people who have been, like, getting off drugs when I was in Butler and Jane Brown. It is a scary. It's scary as hell. Yeah. Because, like, your body physically starts to deteriorate. Yeah. So, like, you're going through withdrawals. Um, and if you're serving out, you're going through that process in a jail cell. You're either going to try to find drugs that are getting sneaked in or you're going to suffer. And we already know how the ACI is. Those niggas don't care. Yeah. So you're just suffering with no medication, no treatment. Like, there have been cases people go into shock, have seizures. Um, I remember uh, the the show on Netflix, Joe, did a thing about it. Like, the girl started having a seizure because she was having withdrawals from the medication. Or it was a boy. Mm-hmm. And, like, that's a real thing. You can, you can have a seizure from withdrawals. So I personally think jail is not the solution. 
Now, legalizing the drugs, that's an interesting conversation. They do that in Canada. But they have, like, stations where you go to shoot up. God bless. So it's done, like, correctly. <clears throat> yeah. So there's no, like, transfer of, like, diseases. It's just contained. Yeah, and it's not it's not done in environments where people can die or get hurt or get HIV, STD, stuff like that. Well, wasn't that the shit that they were talking about that they want to do in KP? Mm-hmm. That was something they were trying like to bring here. and stuff? Yeah, because that's the whole thing. When they're saying Biden's trying to push the crack epidemic on us and, like, give people crack needles. Like, no, this is legitimate stuff that has legitimate research because the reality is this. No matter how much you try, <laughs> these niggas are not getting off drugs. Sorry, buddy. Like, I've seen it. I, I, I've been around these people. This is a legitimate psychological issue that they're having. Like, their brain is cooked. So it's like, how do we minimize the effects of it is the question. Because yeah. trying to treat it, it, we just it, we just can't fix everyone. And throwing them in jail is wrong because now they're going through withdrawals in a prison cell. Like, they have a mental illness. They don't have, they haven't committed a crime. Um... So yeah, that's that's where I'm, I, I just yeah, yeah. I, I can see that yeah I can see that I can see that. But again, also shout out to we're still in Rhode Island, uh, the biggest podcaster in the culture when it comes to music. Joe Budden again has shouted out Rhode Island specifically Providence. We're gonna play some clips talking about. He's saying that according to the Joe Budden podcast, um, it's hard to be loyal in Rhode Island in oh Providence, God. Rhode Island. I guess because we have. Um, part of my French, a lot of bad bitches. Let's play the audio. I swear, bro, he's he's so he's, he's not giving us good. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if yeah. I'm driving two hours, put the speaker up when you get the chance. Oh, God, I'm a little busy. I'm not no, it's the rock, the rock, <laughs> the rock gonna be there. <laughs> the rock gonna be there. <laughs> you should once, go. Once I started being faithful, I stopped going to Philly. <laughs> <laughs> Certain cities just get checked off. Yeah. yeah, yeah if yeah. I'm driving two hours up the turnpike. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we can no go to Philly we and be okay. If I. Oh, I'm not talking about being okay. Yeah, right. We know people in Philly. That's, no, I'm not talking about that. That's no, no, too no. close to Jersey. No, 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 okay. no. That's no, no. not what he meant. That's not what I meant. <laughs> oh, and be faithful. Yes. yes. How? <laughs> <laughs> Easy, nigga. Be faithful. Tell me the places it's tough for y'all to be faithful at. Be Providence, Rhode Island. Yep. <laughs> Number one. Just Rhode Island? Be full no, see, the... Philly is on the Rhode Island list for me. Atlanta. Uh, it would be L.A., but it's a lot of work in L.A., so you can just get fucked with really. You got to act full in a room full of meats. Pause. Got to. What? Wait, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We talking about wrestling. And another clip. Wayne Ron, Wayne Ron, bro. We ain't done with our guys. Two separate episodes. Oh, we ain't done. What's up? I'm done. I'm telling you. I think we should do something. I think it'll be healthy. I'm saying you spot in that Panamera room. Panorama. Where y'all niggas? Linda. Not quite. <laughs> and I'm not never doing a found blue nowhere. Never. Never. I'm never well in Florida anyway. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm maybe going, maybe in Vegas. Are we going to Jerry's? I'll try. Ooh, Vegas even. It's just a flight. It's just yeah. Another Miami's coast. closer. Yeah. I like it. Rhode Island. Nah, nah. Fuck hey, bro. Right there. Nah, I'm cool. We go right now. New New nah, I'm cool. <laughs> you want to go right now? <laughs> nope. Nah, we're going to stay in Rhode Island. I'm good. Okay. Nothing. I'm not going. <laughs> what? No, we should do Miami. We Miami should. sounds reasonable. Yeah, that, that sounds. So they're joking about playing a, a guy's trip. They're talking about Rhode Island. They're saying it's hard to be loyal in Providence. Um, you know, it's a, it's a good sign as far as you know. We have a lot of beautiful women here in the small state. You know, this has been like a sneak. Uh, what's it called? A sleeper state for a lot of people in New York. A lot of people in Boston. A lot of people in New York always mention as you know. Oh, Providence, Rhode Island. You know, they got the the beautiful women. Like, you know, it's like, oh, come over here and check it out. You know, and then I have a lot of uh, single friends that might disagree, though. I feel like, you know, you know, what's up? You guys agree or disagree? I feel like you guys might be um not taking advantage of this. Are, are you guys, you know, like, what's going on? <laughs> Noel Marloon, are you, are you, um, <laughs> are you in a blessed position and not, you know, realizing? Are you guys ungrateful <clears throat> of this amazing city and the women here? <clears throat> <clears throat> Next Ma topic. Mar <laughs> nah, Marlon can go first. Huh? You said Marlon could go first. Nah, nah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you, you can speak for both of us. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> this um, goddamn screen. I know you like to deliver. <laughs> exactly. Silence speaks. Nah, <laughs> Next topic. Yeah, yeah, Next topic. Next topic. Because you know what? I thought about what I was going to say, and I'm like, bro, if I say that... Like, I'm going to get trashed in the comments, and I'm cool. God bless. Boom. Breaking news. That's right. 
what you all are here for. We're going to talk about the Kendrick storm that he's caused, obviously. But breaking news today, as of this recording date, literally an hour, a couple hours before we started recording, Diddy's homes all across America have been raided by the federal government. That's right. Homeland Security has raided P. Diddy Sean Combs homes, his properties, specifically the house mansions in Los Angeles, I think around the Beverly Hills area, um, in Miami, I think on Star Island, where all the famous celebrities have their houses, and in New York as well. There's rumors that his private jet was in New York or on his way to New York, but right now, literally, as we were recording this, it's been reported to have landed in the Caribbeans. Where was the actual uh, Barbuda? Barbuda. Barbuda in the Caribbeans. Is Diddy on the run? This is a sex trafficking investigation. Let's keep in mind that when they do this, this is not like, oh, let's try to see if we find him. Let's try to check it out today. Oh, we, we got a heads up. They have been investigating this for a while. When you, when you get Homeland Security involved, this is not a game. They have something on Diddy. <clears throat> this is a sex trafficking case. They're searching through his houses. They're trying to find evidence. They're trying to find something. In the past, there's been rumors of tapes, videos, allegedly, right? Film that Diddy would film certain things. Bro, literally his actual children are in handcuffs. Justin Combs and, um, Justin Combs and, um, damn, what's the other son's name? My apologies. I don't want to mispronounce his son's name. Justin and King Combs. Justin Combs and King Combs both seen in handcuffs outside of their L.A. home. This is major, a uh, major story happening today. Breaking news, and they're currently investigating, trying to find Diddy. They have not found Diddy anywhere. They've been raiding his mansions. They've actually have been knocking down, you know, doors. And the videos are insane. The photos are insane. They're saying, as we know, there's been multiple allegations and several civil suits against Diddy, including human trafficking, which he denied. Remember, we spoke about how he made a post. He denied. His legal team has denied all these accusations, uh, allegations. They've denied all this. But now, look at what's happening. They have reached out to Diddy's representation. No response yet. Did he do it? Seems like Diddy might be done. 50 Cent has reacted. He posted about it. He said once, they, once the feds get involved, you know, from his recollection, everyone that's kind of been, you know, dealt with this type of situation in the past, academics has been raided. He spoke about it. He said once they go through this extent, this is next level, especially once Homeland Security is involved. Now, we read Little Rod's case in here, and we kind of called bullshit, right? But one of the things that stands out in Little Rod's case was the idea of him taping and evidence being filmed and Diddy having, you know, black male type of energy. That's probably what led to his arrest. You know, what's your guys' thoughts on this breaking story uh, as we walked in here today? And still unraveling. We'll keep you guys updated as we're recording. I'm going to check before we end to see if they might they might find Diddy, you know, by the end of this recording. But what do you think, Noel? <clears throat> Diddy Epstein has been caught. <laughs> Diddy Epstein. Diddy Epstein. I've been calling him Diddy Epstein for a while now. It's Diddy Epstein. Um, this is not surprising. I think Vic is right. They um, They probably think there's... They they probably have connected him to a larger internet like international or like regional or you know countrywide sex trafficking ring. I personally believe Diddy has been supplying Hollywood and like the music industry with what with with sex workers. God damn! I wouldn't doubt it. Um, you know, when is you, Meek Mill one of them? He probably is. Nasty ass nigga. <laughs> um, I think that you know. I think these Hollywood niggas are nasty. I think these industry people are nasty. I think they have sexual desires. Um, you know, we talked about this. Yeah. The Jay-Z interview where there, there's two women having sex while they're interviewing and they're mad calm about it. And Jay-Z is actually pointing at them like, hey, look at them play with their pussy. Like That was crazy. That was insanity. Well, we all it's a throwback. It's, That's a throwback. It's too. a throwback. And we all found it funny. There's also the Kanye video where Kanye's recording a girl popping her pussy during, um, what's that shit called? Freaknik. You yep. remember that? When yep. he's in a there's, crowd? A, there's a Freaknik documentary out right now. I still haven't watched it, but I heard it's bad. So yeah. I'm going to still check it out. He like has a flip phone, and this thing of Kanye is recording the bitch popping her pussy. Like, I think a lot of these dudes are really sick. I, like, I think they let their sexual urges and sexual fantasies out. I think Diddy has been supplying women for that. Um, I think the only reason he got caught is because this quickly, and, and it happened this thoroughly, is because he's black. 
because white people do this shit all the time. There's white niggas on Wall Street right now doing that shit. Like, it's just mad. It's mad common, nigga. Like, yo, white people love having egregious, disgusting sex with people they shouldn't be having sex with. So you think? Do you think that he possibly also upset someone powerful? There's rumors of that happening online. They're saying that Diddy upset the higher ups. He finally, you know, he's a member of the Illuminati. They're oh saying, and like now he's been he's kicked to, off the Illuminati. What do you to, think, Marlon? He's trying to dethrone a pimp. Dethrone a pimp. That's what's going on. I don't know, bro. I don't keep up with none of this shit. <laughs> But you don't think did he do it? Did he do it, Marlon? Did he do it? Huh? Did, did he do it? Do you think I he did really it? Give a fuck. If he did it, then he did it. If he didn't, then we'll get to know. But like, I don't know. This shit don't affect me. <laughs> I think. <laughs> oh, that's an up. interesting perspective. I'm not gonna lie. They're to you. gonna say he's scared in the comments. They're gonna say Marlon's scared to talk because he thinks that Diddy's gonna come after him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Because my exactly th- bro. <laughs> this is my question to you, Vic. Like, <laughs> yeah. I feel like I feel like I definitely feel like he he's he's into into weird shit. Yeah, hundred percent. You think a lot of people in the industry are into weird shit? Hell yeah, yeah, bro. They've done so much. It's like all that's left is the weird shit. Yeah, like Let's be honest. And I'm not gonna lie. Like y'all gonna tell me you don't have sexual urges that are kind of like off. Like it's not off in the sense of illegal, like sex with children. But I mean, like sexual urges that are a little strange. Like it's like okay, that's you, buddy, not me. No, nah, uh, we're not gonna lie here. Like the people have had sexual urges that are like they have fetishes, they have things that are a little weird. That is, is not, like, super weird, but, like, you know, it's a little strange. Like, it's probably to the norm. I mean, it depends. I've never been into, like, people are into, like, feet. Yeah, niggas suck toes. I suck toes. I'm not really into yeah, none, none not of that. into that. Okay. I suck toes. I'm not saying it's a thing I need to do, but it's definitely, like, a thing I would do. That's my point, though. Like, some niggas like getting their ass ate. I'm not those niggas. But... <laughs> I think, you, I think you probably think I think you. I'm kind of guilty. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that. There's a study right now that they're saying that there's a deadly virus going around that comes from eating ass. Mm. So watch We're out. We're gonna there, play a people. quick clip right here of the news coverage that I posted that went viral. Out as uh, Stu was telling you up in Sky Fox. Can you hear it? Um, but we're hearing okay. that P. Diddy may not even be here. We, of course, haven't seen him. Uh, we understand he may have flown on a private jet to New York, which I'm sure kind of threw off their plan, although this was very strategically organized. So I would assume by now, uh, whether he is in New York or not, that he is uh, likely in custody if he is involved in this. Um, but again, we are hearing that this is a involving P. Diddy and sex trafficking charges to what extent or with what details we don't yet know. Out as, uh, Man, you up this is crazy, fog. but keep talking about Noel real quick. Uh, I'm going to look up oh. also this live. I think they're still looking at him. This is going to be an all-day process, guys. They're still rating him all day. Again, um, I definitely think Diddy has been supplying the industry. I don't think this is a conspiracy at all. I don't think he pissed off the elites. I just think um, he had an illegal business. He's definitely done shit for the fucking feds to get involved. Yeah, I Th- think he has an illegal no business. There's no denying that. He has an illegal underground business. I think it that's has what it is. to be. Yeah, but I think he's just got caught because he's black. Because when you're black, you don't have the same benefits as white people. Because it's like, but he has all the money in the world, so he would have all the best lawyers in the world. That's okay, not okay, but this where, is my where point. Where is he getting that money from? From that no, illegal, not just the illegal shit. He has, he has legitimate. Yeah, businesses. he has legitimate businesses. Yeah, I get that. He's a mogul, like, guys. But my he's a but like, business mogul, and they ain't everything they, coming from them businesses. Also, my my sister says plus you need businesses to wash. My sister says something really important about the judicial system. It don't matter how much money you have, buddy. If you're a nigga, you are a nigga. So you think <laughs> it's like how, how Diddy, not how Diddy, but how Jay-Z said in that famous song, I'm still nigga, like no matter what? Exactly. It don't matter how much money you have, how much success you've had, you're still a black man in this country, bro. Now, you want to know what I'm curious about? Yeah. If Diddy, if Diddy get, does get caught and, he, you know, shit comes out where it's like actually true, one, is he going to snitch? Probably. Or or two, if he doesn't snitch and takes it, you know, will people st- start to get connected and shit just hits the fucking fan and then it's just a shit show in the fucking industry. So here's my thing. Depending who's involved in this, because this is the other thing people don't understand. Epstein died because he had dirt on like other billionaires who had the means to kill him. So he was cooked. So I did he die or get killed? I don't think Diddy has that people like that in the industry caught up i think it's more like rappers mm. he might get rappers in trouble and artists but if he has execs them jewish execs <sighs> read real quick marloon this is kenneth owens tweet that's gone viral <clears throat> the feds are currently raiding diddy's house they already knew what he was up to but he is going to be the fall guy so that they can protect the people at the top of the ring they are raiding his home to hide evidence not to find it that's how this works now 
I'm all for different perspectives, and a lot of people are agreeing with this, but I'm like, damn, how would this necessarily work? But I do get it from, like, if we do it like a Jeffrey Epstein type of shit, right? Mm -hmm. Where, like, they're going to be covering up evidence, right? Like, we might see a post soon from Diddy. Uh, It depends. We might not, but it might be like, hey, I'm not suicidal, guys, in case they want to say, because, you know, if he ends up in jail, ends up dead, Jeffrey Epstein committed suicide... People think some people think he's still alive. You know, we never know. We don't. We the the autopsy still. Some people think he got killed. Yeah, it's, it's still it's still hazy. But um, Candace Owens said this pretty confidently. You know, they're raiding his home to hide evidence, not to find it, and they're still raiding his houses right now. Like as we're speaking right now, this is like an all day process. Um, his houses are big. There's rumors of obviously you know with these big mansions have like secret doors, secret rooms. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of these parties would be at these houses. Come on, Vic. But let's be real. You think he hasn't deleted all this shit? This is what's pissing me off. All the evidence. That's what happened with Epstein. When they when the Miami P- police department raided his house in 2005, there was nothing in there. I yeah. truly believe Diddy. Dele- you don't think Diddy already deleted everything before this even happened? You don't think someone tipped him off? You don't think he knew this might have happened? This idea. That there's this secret society is so fucking annoying because you actually think that all those police officers that are raiding those homes are all in collusion with this secret society? Who's paying them off? How is this information not leaking? Yo, yo my nigga, <laughs> hold on. Album information leaks like it's nothing. Mad secret information leaks all the time. You know how many presidential elections mad leaks have happened? But you know how many times she has leaked out of the fucking Pentagon? But somehow, this secret society that is paying off all these people to do shit for them. Somehow nothing has come out about it. We don't know who's fully involved. We don't know how they work. We don't know where they meet. Yeah. But somehow they've paid off everyone to make this shit Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I'll tell you this much. Isn't it crazy? We were talking about it in the, in the chat. Isn't it crazy how literally... My favorite lawyer. Oh, oh she's wild. The Megan Kunif. I love her. Bro, over the weekend, now everyone is now saying no Diddy. Like... No homo, pause. Mm-hmm. No one's saying that. Now it's n- no, no, no Diddy. Diddy. May said it. No Diddy. May said it. instead of saying pause, he said no Diddy. It's no Diddy. No Diddy. And then now, mm-hmm. look at Diddy. Like, it's like... No Diddy. No, no Diddy. Diddy. We speak no it to the universe. The, 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 they where, raided him. Where, they can't find Diddy? Diddy nowhere. No Diddy. No Diddy. Now there's no Diddy anywhere. It's This is like a wild, like... Wow, like a turn of events. Like, you know, oh, this was the post that he made... Yeah, this was a post he made. Not today. I hope I, I would have gotten notif- no, notified. No, no, no. I think it was a while ago. That's we, the whole thing. Yeah, enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to uh, assassinate my character, destroy my reputation, my legacy. Uh, sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of these awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, for my family, and for the truth. I am Sean Diddy fucking Combs. Yo, I did not kill Tupac. Yo, translation. W- what did R. Kelly say? I'm fighting for my fucking life. <laughs> 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 Light ass nigga. Shut the fuck up. And then people were like, so I saw some people trying to be devil's advocate for controversy and just for like, you know, everyone has their opinion. You know, Diddy, why are we laughing about someone being in jail? Well, because of the allegations and accusations being so serious that jail and prison are the least of Diddy's worries. Diddy, if Diddy's guilty of any of this, God is gonna hang then, his ass. Then in reality, his head might have to be cut off. They might have to cut his head off. Yeah. Like, bro, like you're telling me like he's sex sex trafficking and getting these underage girls and like, you know, for since the 90s, like on camera, and like, come on, bro. Like, this is like OD. And then you get the the male aspect, which is nothing wrong with being gay, but then secretly being gay and then having F- fake relationships. And forcing other men to have sex with you and forcing men into have sexual parties you, with you. You want to know what I find weird about this? This is so weird, bro. Is that obviously, you know, um, his ex or whatever came out, got paid out fast. Then Lil Rod. Cassie. Did, yeah, then Lil Rod did whatever the fuck he did. But like now this is like breaking news, right? Usually yeah. what happens with breaking news, people start to flood out. Mm. Not a single person has said anything yet, which is weird to me. He has a point. If if Diddy does have all these victims and he's gone, why is no one speaking right now? Mm-hmm. This is the perfect opportunity for you to do so and get protection if you were to say something and you were scared of all the... You know what I'm saying? This is a good We point. do have young Miami, his alleged girlfriend, City Girls, uh, Carisha, one half of the City Girls tweeting... They're asking her, Carisha, where Carisha at? She said, right here, what's up? 
with the eye emoji. Then she's acting like nothing happened, tweeting about Santana. I left Santana, blah, blah, blah. blah. Are, we playing, are we playing dumb here? Seems like she's playing dumb. Why? This would be the least of your worries, Santana's hairstyle. They probably told her just tweet some random shit. Shit, yeah. You think that the feds are not, like, investigating and interviewing you? Carisha? Like, what are you doing? No, they are. Like, come on, bro. Anyone near Diddy has to get a lawyer right now. Anyone that's been near him, has been close to him, in photos with him for years, they're going to be investigated. Meek Mill. Young Miami. All French Montana. Yo. Yeah. Everyone is going to be investigated, interviewed, this is the federal government. This is no longer a joke. Yo, Jay Z, this is crazy. Jay Z, no, why do you talk about it? Jay-Z. Why do you think he stepped down from revolt? Revolt. Why do you think that um, uh, Ciroc parted ways? You know, it's for he knew something. He, they knew that this was gonna be a big, you know, avalanche effect or snowball effect. Now it's hitting everyone in the face. So this is my thing. There's two things here. Because Marlon's absolutely right. No one has said anything yet, right? No one's come out. Give, give him 24 it. hours. Okay, we'll give him 24 hours. Cool. If no one still comes out, I have a question now. Take my, my glasses off for this. <laughs> this is a real question. It's a real last question. <laughs> Was this all cap and did he actually is a scapegoat for something bigger? Which is a chance. There's a chance for that. It's possible. Or... Are the people that are involved with Diddy also have committed crimes? Mm-hmm. And I have to ask, you're going to tell me people like Joe Budden and Jay-Z didn't know this was going on? It's definitely possible. <laughs> it's not out of the realm of possibility. How deep is like the collusion in this situation? I don't think there's a secret society, but I think that people make very stupid decisions in the moment because they're just caught up. And I can fully see a situation <laughs> where people like Meek Mill... Jay Z, Joe Budden, have committed crimes with P Diddy. Yeah, and have been victims themselves. Let's in a sense, but have also created victims themselves, allegedly. And no one's gonna speak up because everyone knows like this will create bigger issues for everyone involved. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. The whole industry. I think that's kind of an understood silence right now. I think what the main giveaway was the fact that he flew away. Like the plane being found in the Caribbean. Like how do, how are you as a father, you know, putting your children in a situation where they're being in handcuffs, both your your sons, right? Being on camera now, millions of people worldwide seeing it in handcuffs outside of their house because they are looking for you and investigating you for sex trafficking and you are, are allegedly running away on a plane. We thought it was in New York and now they're saying in the Caribbeans. So you're going international with it. Every man for themselves. That's crazy. You know, that, that's the, and they're grown men, obviously, but those are still your children. Unless, ho- oh, hopefully not, allegedly, are they in on it? Where are they on, in on it? I think Little Rods, one of Little Rods' accusations was that one of the, that the kids were like in on drugging the women in the clubs, etc. I think there was like literally photos of the alleged situation. I don't think they're in on it. He would have brought them. He let them. He let them stay. He knew they were gonna have nothing on. I them. mean, King Combs was throwing up GD and this and that and all this, all this other shit. So, you know. I think they knew he need to get out. They had to stay, run whatever businesses were remaining. I get his move. The thing is, what is he going to do now? He stays in Bali for the rest of his life? With Russell Simmons? What are we talking about, If bro? Diddy If Diddy is in Bali with Russell Simmons doing yoga, I swear to God, I'm going to break my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to break my phone, bro. I'm going to break my phone. Usher was just chilling with them like nothing. You got Russell Simmons like... Looking like he's on the, the 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 most purest cocaine you've seen in your life. <laughs> like, whoa. And then we add Diddy into the mix? It's, oh, no, bro. This is about to possible. be crazy, man. It's possible. This is about to be crazy. We'll keep you guys updated with this. Um, But let's move on to the bigger story happening. Not bigger, because this is more serious, obviously, as people are being fucking, hopefully not, raped, etc., sexual assault. Um, <laughs> There is a war right now. Started by Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar has started a war, a civil war in hip hop right now. The three headed monster, J. Cole Drake and Kendrick Lamar. And Kendrick Lamar has launched the official first official direct shot at Drake and J. Cole. The song is called Like That off of the Future album. Check out the Future album. I love the Future album. My favorite album of the year so far. We don't trust you. We predicted here last week the idea of we don't trust you being 
directed at Drake because Drake and Metro Boomin have been beefing publicly, right? Metro Boomin has been going back and forth, tweeting and deleting, and Drake came out to Twitter and deleters. He did, he took him off of songs. There's rumors of it being a female issue. And then Metro was tweeting before saying like, oh, it's actually some petty stuff. It's not really that serious. But I think it might be more serious than they're trying to make it seem that it's not, right? Uh, now we have the We Don't Trust You title. And I'm like, oh, it has to be at Drake. It could be. Is Drake on the album? He's not. First major uh, surprise feature was The Weeknd. I think when you played in order, it's like, oh, why is The Weeknd on here? No, yeah, he's mm. like vocals. Then the music video dropped today, The Weeknd, hiding his face. I've seen that. Metro Boomin wearing an EXO chain. I think The Weeknd pick a side, baby. I'm you know? sorry. And on For All The Dogs, Drake gave a shot to The Weeknd. Yeah, he's After it. ending their beef, and, and there was like a, they were like reconciliating, and then he was like, oh, why would we beef on another song? On the new album, he said, you know, bitches don't listen to The Weeknd. On the Party Next Door song. Okay. It's like, oh, you're picking a side of these R&B crew niggas that you fucking put on in the game? These mis these amazing R&B singing niggas, influential as fuck? Because it was never about them! You know what I'm saying? It's about you get hits from them. And then, okay, fast <laughs> forward, continue the album like that. Travis Scott played it! Travis Scott premiered no, it! No, he didn't. Where? Bro, at Roll It Loud. We spoke yeah, about he, it last he week. Roll it loud. He was like, play that da 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 song. Yeah, he was His favorite song like, on the play album. Play it, play it, play it. Play it. And I was like, yo, this song song's amazing. I'm like, this is amazing. The production's amazing. And the future was like, yeah, we're gonna play the whole album. Be careful. Blah blah blah. At that time it was a future verse that's not on the album. Wait, so Travis picked their side? <laughs> there was no Kendrick Lamar verse at the time. Yeah, there wasn't. Now the official album drops and there's a Kendrick Lamar verse. So Could it be a fresh new verse that Travis Scott didn't hear? And like I said, Big Sean, the day before this album came out, previewed a verse where he was like, I'm you know, I'm not consistent. That's why I'm not in the conversation with the bigger three. So he's like, oh, I'm the shit. Big, hold Big, up. Big Sean can hold his L, bro. You know, and Kendrick Lamar and Big Sean had a beef in the past that they ended. He spoke about it when he got interviewed by Joe yeah. Budden and a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yo, I spoke to Kendrick. I saw him on the plane. I think I saw Top Dog on the plane. We ended the beef, you know, because it was a rumored beef since Control. There's been like a, a beef because of that situation and him taking the Control verse off, right? Fast forward, now we have the Kendrick verse. And it reads like this, like that, verse 2 by Kendrick Lamar. These niggas talking out they necks, don't pull no coffin out your mouth, I'm way too paranoid for a threat. Hey, let's get it, bro. D.O.T., the money, power, respect, the last one is better. Say it's a lot of goofies with a check. Already goofies with a check. And a lot of goofies with a check, nigga. People a lot are, of dogs with people checks. People are saying he's talking about Drake. Drake. Goofy the dog from Disney. And you got a check, nigga. And he got a check. He got about. money. Drake has more money than everyone. And you got Nike. The check. Nike. Yes. Yeah. And he's saying DOT, the money, power, respect. Last one is better. Kendrick Lamar always cares more about respect. his respect than anything else, right? Drake only wants money and power. They say Drake only wants money, right? Also, there was a trip on Tondra with that check bar. I didn't know about it until Twitter said it. The bro. Nike shit? The Nike. Nike check? The money. And the fucking verified checks. Huh? Yeah, people were like, oh, blue check. You mm -hmm. got blue checks. A lot well, of goofies uh, with blue checks. You know, but we could be dissecting it too deeply. But that's Kendrick what, Lamar okay. is like that's strategic. Okay. Yeah, He's like okay. that. He really got it, right? Um, also, <clears throat> by the way, Kendrick Lamar, huh, thank you for watching us. I know you're subscribed to the channel. Because uh, I've been calling you out for about three fucking years saying, where's Kendrick Lamar? Where's Kendrick Lamar? Now we have Kendrick Lamar speaking directly. At that point, the only thing he didn't say was just... Drake, like Aubrey Graham. He basically said his name without saying his name. No, he's putting his dogs in the grave. He, this is the most direct shot. Like, this is what we said. Like, if you're going to fucking <clears throat> do it, fucking out of, out do of, it. Out of everyone, he's been the most direct. This is the most direct shot between his, all the beats. In his last album, he mentioned his name. Yeah. Yeah, he did say that. He, he did say, I'm more Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. He said that he didn't like how Kanye and Drake yeah, ended that, the beef. That shit was weird. He him. was like, it's kind of weird, but he's like, maybe I haven't matured enough. And now he said, fuck maturity, I chose violence. He literally said the violence line on this fucking yeah. verse. Let's continue it. <laughs> Let's but we want to take credit for this, Kendrick Lamar. We know you've been listening. We know you've been watching. Don't act fucking stupid. Yo, so wait. Let me ask a question. Is Top the reason they, <clears throat> he never said it? Top Dog Entertainment? Yeah. Is he the reason why he's never said Candyman? Because that was the argument. I don't think so. I don't that think was so. why him and Top Dog split. Because I don't think so. Top Dog wouldn't let him do it. Because he's still working so. with TDE. Last week he was pictured with, uh, what's that guy on the Schoolboy Q album? Malik? Whatever his name yeah, is? Malik? Devin Malik, Malik or yeah. something? But he's not signed He was in the studio with, um, with that artist. So like he's helping TDE still. So he's probably very close with them. He's still tied in. But he's not signed not to them. Not signed to them. Yeah. yeah. But 
uh, this is not gonna necessarily affect I don't business. Think, I don't think Top ever had like influence with when it came down to hell. No. No. My th- I don't know because I feel like Top told him, "Yo, bro, you do this diss, you could be risking your career." Hell no, he ain't risking shit. Yeah. At the time, Kendrick got this. We're saying this right now. Back then, when Drake was bigger than Kendrick, I could get why he would yeah, say but, that. But because this that, be, we've been going on for years. Yeah, yeah. But like the only time it would have quote unquote affected his career is when Drake put him on at the very beginning. I would yeah, say, let's be honest. The butterfly. After Section 80. Because King, King Kunta, Kendrick he subbed was, them. Kendrick was holding Let's continue his the verse. Remember, King Kunta, he said, niggas is writing bars as if they're sharing beds. They're sharing the same bunk beds. Sharing bunk beds, yeah. that's true. Yeah. The verse continues, I hope the sentiment's <clears throat> symbolic. My temper, temperament bipolar, I choose violence. He, he's choosing violence, okay? And he goes, let's get it up. It's time for him to prove if he's a problem. This Drake. Is a song. Then he keeps going. <laughs> Bless, Bless you. you. Thank you. Niggas clicking up, but cannot be legit. No 40 water. Tell them. And that's like an E40 reference because so, the so click group back in the day. That and also the clicking thing, they're connecting it to that specifically to J. Cole. J. Cole him yeah, clicking J. Cole up. Yeah, J. Cole and him clicking up. Getting together as a dynamic duo. Um, because uh, think about it. Why would Kendrick Lamar do it at well, any not, point not in time? So not right now. More than ever. Yeah, because it looks not, like dick eating what they're doing. They're on yeah. tour yeah. together. That, yeah. That, but not only that, there is a, I forgot what song it is. Put the camera on you in case Kendrick Lamar sends a bomb. <laughs> There's a, <laughs> no, because I'm on Kendrick Lamar's side. Oh, oh you're picking a side. I We're going to talk about picking sides in a second. I, I, I love Kendrick my Lamar. Side. I love Kendrick Lamar. I'm sorry. My side's macaroni. What? Keep going. Anyways, <laughs> there's a track of J. Cole. I forgot which one it is. In the video, he's talking about like with guns and shit like that, and he's, he's clicking them. Yeah. So they're referring that. He's like, okay, he's talking about this. He's talking about he clicking. Yeah. And so what what the hell, what does the line say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, um, they cl- niggas clicking up, but cannot be legit. No 40 water. Exactly. He's not legit. He's not really clicking up. He doesn't know gun. But it keeps going. Especially Get up with me. Especially because J. Cole says that the stuff that he says isn't really true. Then he keeps going. He says, fuck sneak dissing. Right? So he's like, fuck you guys sneak dissing. And also, fuck me sneak dissing. Because you've been sneak dissing for a couple years as well, Kendrick Lamar. Now you want to put the fucking name on the bullet. You basically did it here because the next line was, fuck sneak this in. First person shooter. I hope they come with three switches. I oh. crash out like fuck rap. So he's willing to crash out now. He's talking about the first person shooter collaboration. Hit song, J. Cole and, and Drake, right? The music video, the moment, the whole unification. How can, um, how can, it's amazing to see two legends coexist, right? Drake last week, Fuck Almost cried on stage talking to Kendrick Lamar saying, like, my career, uh, if they were to swap you with someone else, my career wouldn't be the same. Talking about J. Cole? Or? Like, talking about J. Cole. Basically saying that he needed J. Cole to exist for his career to exist. You know, basically, I don't know, it could be taken as a sub, as a shot, in a good way, bad way. That still is a respectful line. It's like, wow, what the fuck? You, you care about this nigga be even being alive? I get it, but this is so much dick eating. Like, shut up. But Hate each other. I gotta but stop. <laughs> I gotta stop. but it's like a genuine thing. Like it is amazing. Like why not? You know, we their their collabs have been amazing. They're probably gonna keep cooking up collaborations. Who wouldn't want to see some love? Not this man. Kendrick Lamar said, "Fuck all that shit. Fuck you niggas kissing." Next lines. Yeah. I'm snatching up. Blah 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 blah. blah. Let's get let's get to make main lines. He said, "No, give us the whole." If he walk thing. around with that stick, it ain't Andre 3K. And he said, "I lost too many soldiers not to play it safe." Think I won't drop the location. I still got PTSD. Motherfuck the big three. Nigga, it's just big me. Nigga, bum. So he's calling niggas these niggas bums. That line is amazing. I'm not, I don't know where he came up with it. Nigga, bum. It's like, it's like an ad lib. It's like, are you calling so a bum? Hard, you know what I'm saying? That. Niggas are bum. And like, they're not bums. You they're know? bums. You know, J. Cole dress, dresses like no. a bum, but like, it's, it's fashion. You know I'm what I'm saying? I'm instigating the fuck out this. It's fashion vibes. <laughs> I, I, I like J. Cole's fashion. Um, and he's saying, um, That's a bum. think I won't drop the location. Why are we dropping locations? It's like, it's like smoke like that? So, like, are these niggas trying to, like, is it like a personal thing? Or are we trying to, like, see each other in person? Kendrick for Compton, bro. I, no, no I, Kendrick would, you know what I'm saying? Be, I get why. He has, he, he's, he's acknowledging something that the industry doesn't want to talk about. The way that Drake paints himself is he's this mob ass nigga. Yeah, and he's killed people. He, we talk about and, all the time. And he, he, uh, he spins around the block. Yeah. But you know, with Ken- the lights off, caught him in daylight. But this is I could I could understand why someone like Kendrick would be offended by the existence of Drake because Drake grew up in this nice ass home with a fucking swimming pool outside, while Kendrick's in Compton having to kill people to survive. 
Yeah. Like, he, he wrote a song about it's having, different worlds. Yeah, and it's like, bro, you you look at it as something to glorify, like, this cool mobster shit. I had to, like, not... I had to kill someone, and it affects me every day in my life. Like, yeah, he's yeah. written about it on multiple mixtapes and albums. But So I get why. He's like, nigga... I got PTSD, nigga. You want to drop this address? Like, we could do this. I got niggas that kill. I kill. What up? Then he said, uh, <laughs> What up? <laughs> Your best work is a light pack. Nigga, Prince outlived Mike Jack. For all the dogs being buried, getting buried, that's a K with all these nines. He going to seat Pet Cemetery, nigga, bum. Right? So, your best that's work is like, a light that's pack. That's a K, bro. Whose best work is a light pack, though? Drake Scary Hours EP3? Or e, uh, 3 EP? No. The light pack? Your best work? No, he's saying your best work is a light pack. Like, it's trash. He's probably talking about Cole there. Or he's talking about Drake. No, he's talking about Drake. Uh, the their best work is a light pack, though. The majority of the stuff was at Drake. But their best works are a light pack. No, it goes back to the Mike and Prince bar. Remember, Joe Budden talked about this when it came to Kanye and Jay-Z. Mike is supposed to be, in a lot of people's eyes, the industry sweetheart. Like, when Michael Jackson was alive, the industry loved him. He was very pop, very sensational. And then people argued that Prince was supposed to be the rebel, the mm -hmm. anti-machine. Yeah. He was supposed to be, he was supposed to reflect, like, what real music is. Um, so I could see him trying to argue. His best work is better than their best work? Yeah, I'm Prince here. Do you, think, do you guys think that? Is Good Kid Mad City, that's, that's the question then. To make it in layman's terms, is Good Kid Mad City better than Drake's best album or J. Cole's best album? Let me ask And then my thing is, what's Drake's best album? I Got Nothing was the same. Now is nothing with the same better than Good Kid Mad City. He's asking, is your commercial good, good kid, shit better than my music, my art? That's good, what he's saying. If I, let, let's, let's, let's let's think about this. Let's think about the same time. Like, camera we, on, like, on you, camera now. on you, and Case Kendrick Lamar okay. is gonna he's gonna right. say our names, so bro. About, next song. Let's the same time, about, it's nothing was the same. Good Kid Mad City. What was out at the same time? Good Kid Mad City. Nothing was the same. Born Center with the three out at the same time, around the same time. Was Nothing like was the same around Good, uh, Good Kid in Man City? Yeah. that really? Possibly. Yeah, it was. Take Care came out in 2010. Nothing was the same came out in 2013. Drake's Kendrick's they all, OG. They all went up for the same um, Grammy. Drake's Kendrick's OG, but keep it going. Born Sinner dropped that year too. So did Yeezus. They, were, they all lost to Macklemore that year. It's it's 2013. Macklemore. My God, I forgot about that bullshit. Yeah, that, we even in had the case Noel has his facts wrong, don't kill him in the comments, but kill him in the comments. We like engagement. <laughs> yeah, I'll literally look it up right now too. <laughs> <laughs> but what's uh, J. Cole's best album? That's the thing. I like For, the off season. Forest Hills Drive. I like Forest Hills Drive as well. Good Kid Mad City is arguably the really most classic album out of too. all the discographies. Good, Good Kid, Kid Mad City. City is a classic to like the hip hop enthusiasts. Yes. A lot of hip hop enthusiasts say Drake doesn't have a classic. To this day, they say that, which I think is wrong. But I think yeah, that's what Kendrick has, Lamar is trying has, to say. He has classics. And then Prince outlived Michael Jackson, right? Okay. But in my opinion, I think Michael Jackson is a way better, like... People I, disagree with what you're about to say. I, I love yeah, Michael Jackson disagree. way more than Prince. Way more than Prince. Prince had more integrity, yeah. Prince was the guy that was anti-culture. Like, he had more character. Like, he had more character. You know what I'm saying? He was a... He literally named himself artist and, like, was, like, on some independent shit. Fuck the industry shit. Before people are doing it now as trendy, he was on that type of shit before back then. You know, he didn't want to sell his soul. He was calling all that out before then. So maybe that's the route that Kendra's trying to go now because he's independent. He's off of TDE. So now he's trying to become Prince, right? And then Prince also performed with Kendrick before. Kendrick has performed with Prince before. And then Michael Jackson was on Drake's Scorpion album, a mm -hmm. post uh, Hamas. Oh, I was right. And then Drake is calling himself Michael Jackson with the glove behind the glove, performing the whole situation. Oh, yeah, what was yeah. that line he said? He, he said, what the fuck? I'm one away from Michael Mike beating. Beat it, beat it, beat it. So here it is. Good Kid, Mass City, nothing was the same. And Born Center all dropped the same year. With Yeezus, Magna Carta, Holy Grail dropping in the same year. So of that three, that big three, Damn, nothing see, was the same. Good Kid, Mass City, and Born Center. I'm going to be real with you. A lot of people say Born Center is better than Forest Hill Drive. Y'all can take that for what you want. I think you just said that, bro. I don't think no one's ever listened no, to that. No, every mad people. Bro, what? Hell no. Hell yeah. Oh, mad yeah. niggas see that shit. Maybe in that. 2015. Yo, first off, before Name one song off Born Center, Marlon. Stop chatting. <laughs> Name a song off Born Center. <laughs> Crooked Smile. Crooked Smile. Forbidden Fruit. Forbidden Fruit. Um, um, she Knows. Um, Miss that. America. Bro, they, there's mad songs on that shit. Bro, that's what people say. I don't agree with it. I'm going to tell you this. 
I love J. Cole. I love J. Cole. I watched, uh, fuck with J. Cole, too. I met J. Cole, too, at the Forest Hill Drive concert that came to Prada Lupos. I met him in the back. I saw the photo when I looked like I was about to cry. Hell yeah. I love that nigga. Here's my thing. If I have to choose between Forest Hill Drive, Good Kid, Mass City, and we can Let's say- Let's be honest. You know, you know what the thing is, too? Sorry to cut you off. Mm -hmm. when Camera on you, because Kendrick Lamar is going to kill us, bro. I'm telling you. This is gonna be, he's watching, Born, I swear to God. When Born Center came out- that's what Victor hated J. Cole. Oh, yeah. You he didn't like J. Cole. He didn't, J. Cole. he didn't like him during Forest Hill Drive he, either. That is true, too. He didn't like, bro, my dude. Oh, we're two calling most, out Vic now. No, those are his two most well-sold albums, and this nigga hates both of them. So, if I'm going by well, that. I don't know one, if he still hates them, but he did not like Born you Center don't like for Born Center. sure when you don't it like came Born out. Center, There's no way you like that album. Bro. Because they didn't even age that well. I don't even have to look at the track list. I'm not going to give you guys the due the, the diligence. And then that. he hated Forest Hill Drive, I remember, because the only song he liked was, <laughs> um, was Fire Squad. That's the only song he oh, liked. Oh, yeah, you're right. Replay value. <laughs> <laughs> you see? You see? <laughs> this is my point. Good Kid, Mad City is the better of the three. I'm sorry. Good Kid, Mad City is the most classic, yes. Okay. But what is the argument here? Is he just trying to argue like... I make better art. Make better art. You niggas make trendy bullshit I, I, that don't last. Yeah, I, I I guess we could argue. Can I guess we could argue Kendrick <laughs> He's watching, has the more rap hip hop inspired work. Listen, man, I'll tell you this much. For what they stand, I don't know, man. Remember I, the thing is with Drake. A lot of people don't consider him fucking rap hip hop. Let me ask a question. This is a nasty question. Because this is their most introspective albums, respect respectfully. Okay. For your for your eyes only, or to pimp the butterfly. Which Bro, one to you pimp pick? The butterfly. To pimp the butterfly. I think. No so way. he made a great point. He made his point in the song. That's just what I'm asking you. That's all I'm asking. But I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna be honest with both of <laughs> you. I love for you. I love for your eyes only. I think that this this verse, that this whole thing, was mainly directed to Drake. The, Especially this the, line. the only thing with J. Cole was because J. Cole said, you know, the top three is it uh, K. Dot, uh, K. Dot, yeah, he, he acknowledged it because he thought you it was dick saying? eating. Yeah. But, but <laughs> other than that, everything else I think is directed straightly, to, like straight to the, the Drake. Especially the Michael Jackson line is obvious to me. Like, okay. And that's Prince Outlive Mike Jack is like a bar. Like, it's going to stand the test of time. Like, you know what he means. That's like a hard-ass bar. If you know what he means, you know what he means. Even if you debate it, disagree with it, agree with it, that's just crazy to say. Like, wow. Like, this guy, okay, he really is talking his shit. But then the following line is even, even K, more direct. The K to the 9, K9 stand for dogs, pet cemetery, dogs. No, even before that, he says, dogs. for all your dogs getting buried. Obviously, for all the, the album, dogs. Yeah. And it's like, for all your dogs getting buried, is like, Nigga, I'm going I'm to kill you and I'm going to bury everyone as, as well. That's, that's, that's All your dogs are next you. with you or with you, you mm -hmm. know. And then he says, that's a K with all these nines. They gonna, he going to see Pet Cemetery, right? K9, Pet Cemetery, dogs. And then nines is like, okay, these guys are good, right? You can call them a nine out of ten, but I'm the ten out of ten. I'm the K. I am the killer. Not I am that, Kendrick Drake, Lamar. Drake, 10 out of 10. Drake has that one track, nine, which is uh, not, the nine. Uh, what is it? Views. Yeah. Six Upside Down does a nine now. You know what I'm saying? This is crazy. But, and in the song, obviously, Future is you like that, as you like that, as you like that, as you like that, as you like that, right? And it's, like, obviously produced by Metro Boomin. I think the pot is being cooked. I genuinely think that Kendrick Lamar did this verse recently, like, literally in the past week, and it's, like, fresh. But I do not think that he's not prepared for war. I think he has this is loaded up. I think he has a lot of information, a lot of data, and he's just trying to spark the fire to see if these guys get the ball rolling. Now, people uh, are mad because so. Drake has not officially really responded yet. You know, he hasn't. And people are like, oh, you had 24 that shit, hours. That shit you said was mad. 24 funny, hours. Bro. 24 hours. But. I love that people are pressing him. Academics, a lot of people are making arguments. And I can see the argument where it's like, hmm, when it comes to this song, it's not a diss song. It's just a diss verse. And it's not a Kendrick Lamar song. And it's still a hidden feature. So it's like, he's just speaking. It's not a necess necessarily like he's dropping a back to back or like a charged up, like a record that's just fully about it. Drake has been subbing him for years, right? They've been subbing back each other back and forth. So Drake, all he has to do technically, if we're going by those standards, and it's just a subbing uh, back and forth, it is direct, it's not a diss song fully, then all he has to do is just sub back or maybe diss back, and the 24-hour well, concept is no, out the window. Your, your argument is destroyed when you consider Future made an entire album to diss him. 
Yeah. There's two. The first two songs, he's acknowledging. Have, but technically, he's just acknowledging guys, it's about Drake. Seen, technically, that's still rumored. Have you guys seen? What? Have Yo, you, Nick. He literally mentions dogs multiple. Yo, bro. you be moving the yeah. goalpost for Drake. No, nigga. I you think be yo, moving the goalpost for no, Drake. No, no. Have y'all seen? I never said that's my opinion. Have, have I'm saying seen, it's, technically it's not. It's not confirmed. Have y'all seen that supposedly every track on that album is a response to a track from uh, from Drake? Hold on. Have but you seen But that's false because a lot of those songs are not even on that album. Won't be no, late. No, no, is not no, on. No, no, yeah, yeah. No, on the, they're, for all the dogs. They're, they're not specifically targeting for all the dogs. But I think that's they're why just, it's fake. Because why the fuck would they reword old ass songs because that have nothing to do with? Because them. they're now they're now going back to all these other tracks and finding shit that could possibly be a yeah, fucking hit. There was that's no, fake though. I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm kind of agreeing with that only because of what Kanye said. Kanye said how um, Drake plays chess when he beefing with niggas when he was on Drink Champs. He's like, bro, he'll move in next to you. Or he'll do, he'll like... Or fuck your girl. Yeah, or he'll like, or he'll just follow your girl to just get in your head. Or he'll, yeah. he'll put in a bar on a track you never even thought about. Mm -hmm. I think Future Metro sat down, recognized everything, and were like, wait a fucking minute. This nigga been dissing us for a grip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just got hot. Because my issue is, why is The weekend here? Why is Rick Ross following him? Why is Party Next Door... I saw what you posted. It's being shown a headliner, a headliner yeah. and they're With portraying it. So let's get into that right as now. As if Metro's the special guest. Let's yeah. get into that right now. So, um, and uh, shout out to Wide Try. He's going to step in. Uh, I think he's at Ra Raising Kings, but he's going to step in in a moment. When he does, he's going to join you, Mar. He's going to wheel a chair in and just sit next to you. So he's just put him over there once he walks in. Um, just put him over there. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean it respectfully. I just mean like, you know. Um, he said the line is tweaking right now at Raising Canes. Shout out to, <laughs> shout shout to, to go inside, bro. Shout out to Raising Canes. Raising Canes, by the way, is I'm a, I'm 20 miles chair. away from here. 20 miles away from here. Raising Canes, by the way. It's not near, no nowhere nearby us. It's 20 miles away from here. Um, yo, Metro Boomin, the pot stirrer, the puppet master behind all this, I think is Metro Boomin. Metro Boomin literally tweeted, once you pick a side, stay there. Hashtag, we don't trust you. Why would he tweet this? It's now viral. Seven million people have seen this tweet. Once you pick a side, stay there. What side are you picking? And this was after the album dropped. Hashtag, we don't trust you again. Why are you talking about picking sides? None of this, none of these songs are called picking side. You, he's not promoting just the album. He's obviously talking about the elephant in the room, the Kendrick Lamar diss, and the Drake battle, right? But then one tweet went viral because there was a rumor that Drake and, and, um, and Future are beefing because of a girl, and the girl that they're beefing over, her name is Diana Duh on Instagram, and the song Princess Diana is about her because her name is Princess Diana on social media. Metro Boomer responded saying, y'all niggas stop making up uh, stuff for engagement and enjoy the music. Why are you telling people to stop making up stuff to en and enjoy the music? If you're telling us, once you pick a side, stay there, like... He, I think that he's just specifically talking about that song, Princess and that Diana. Girl, I think he doesn't want that girl. And that like girl, that. he doesn't want a boyfriend, bro. Yeah, like, he doesn't want to get her yeah, involved. Yeah. But if I'm him, don't respond at all. Don't clear nothing up because you're gonna confuse people. Like you're Mr. Tweeter Deleter. I think he liked and unliked a tweet talking about um I know what you're talking about uh, the Drake uh mm -hmm. lines and like uh and et cetera. And he retweeted in a uh, a gif or a meme yep. of like Dragon Ball Z when like <laughs> when they're like, This is how Metro Boomin felt when Kendrick Lamar sent the verse back and it was like <laughs> Some shit from Dragon Ball Z, like a villain, and he retweeted it. And it's like, Metro, I think you know what you're doing. Now. Yeah. You're playing into it and you're telling people to stop with the narratives. You guys are creating narratives and you cannot blame people. At the end of the day, brother, you're going to have the number one song in the country. You're going to have the number one album in the country. Just stop it being mad at people's takes, engage, blah, blah, blah. Unless you do an interview, clear shit up, which you're not going to. None of them are going to. They don't need it. They don't need that for promo. This album's already doing the numbers. They have another album. Dropping in two weeks. I no, actually three weeks. I think April and April next month, mm -hmm. which is already probably recorded. Maybe, maybe not. Right? How strategic is this shit? If right? Party's on that album. Oh my god! But then him planting that so. seed, right? Pick a side. What's been happening afterwards? People are saying people are picking sides. First situation that I'll highlight might be in a nine order, but this is the first situation I'm gonna highlight. Rick Ross unfollowed Drake on social media. Him and Drake are close friends. They've always collaborated. They were even going to do a collab album. Why would he unfollow Drake? Now there's clarification on other rumors that might be tied to it. Christina Mackey, popular, beautiful girl, on Instagram model. She was with Rick Ross for like two or three months. They were dating. It was all over social media. He made her hamburger helper. He made fun of her. It went viral. 
they broke up publicly. They're not together. Last night, she was at Drake's concert. And Drake was the one that got her ticket. She posted it up. Now they're like, did Drake fuck his girl? What's going on here, right? Is this another situation where Drake fucking these niggas bitches? Why would he unfollow him? And why would he be on the album? Then Metro Boomin also tweeted Rick Ross's uh, like song and like added him and like was celebrating Rick Ross and like showing him love on Twitter because of his collaboration on the album. And it's like, oh, is he picking a side? What is he talking about picking sides? Fast forward, more people allegedly picking sides. We have Lil Durk and Lil Baby in the club with Drake in Miami, you know, at Drake's concert. Keep two, Lil Baby. Two chains at Drake's concert, you know, and Drake was pointing, we got him here, blah, blah, blah. Two chains was there? Two chains was there, right? But oh, he didn't have any Miami rappers. Rick Ross was nowhere to be found at the Florida concert. You would think he would have Rick Ross. Rick Ross wasn't there, right? What's going on, right? And then we have The Weeknd. They already have their beef. We already talked about it. And then he's on the album. And it was like not even credited. So people, even in the credits, when you look him up secretly, so people are like, oh, he probably just did like a, a little ad lib, doesn't even want the credit at all. It's a hidden feature, but he doesn't even want the extra credit. He's in the music video that dropped today. He f covers his face in the music video, but he's in the music video. And it's all strategic. And then you see Metro Boomin, Metro Boomin wearing the EXO chain, you know. And then speaking of EXO, Nav. Now we got Nav unfollowing Drake, right? And then we got Drake posting, uh, uh, and what's it, little Turks, little baby? What do you say? What's the line? Yeah, the, he took the song from Turks. I, I ain't picking I, up. I, I'm I in Turks, little up. baby. Turks, what's little good? Baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hop in, bro. You're good. What's good? Why try? We, he's why try in the building? Yeah, yeah. You could dap us up. You're good. Everything, everything's rolling. What's good, my brother? Yeah. You just join him back there whenever you get the chance for, for this, this this discussion, and then when we can do your segment, uh, highlighting your stuff, you can hop on and over here. But you're good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, how's everything though? <laughs> how's, uh, how's the food? You taste what it yet? What the fuck? What's up with y'all came? That's, that's just that's crazy. Bro. Like... <laughs> it's, it's not that. It's not even that any, serious, anytime, anytime after 9 o'clock, that shit gets booming. And From 9 to like 11. Back, back home. Like, I think they close at 12 too, right? Like, we have it back mm -hmm. in yeah. the crib. It's like whatever. But you niggas it's be... probably better too. Because over here, they got the, the, the this shit. Problem. I don't know if you open it up yet, but them shits be like this out here. Oh, yeah. Like very thin, very thin and very small pieces. They tripping. Yeah. Appreciate it, brother. You know what I'm saying? It's, just, it's trying our best. Trying my best. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. The lighting, the lighting adds to the aesthetic. You know what I'm saying? When we turn the lights on, Cockroach just start coming out. But nah, I'm just imagine. Snickers nah. insane, bro. <laughs> nah, I appreciate it, brother. Nah, yeah, but feel free to join whenever, bro. Um, right now, we're highlighting the 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 sides that people are picking. Um, so what was it? Nav? Nav picked the side. Yeah, Nav um, unfollowed Drake, and then Drake put up the Turk song. What's, what's the line? Uh, I ain't picking, picking up. up I'm in Turks, Turks Little Baby. Baby, which I hated that song when it came out. Where it's Gunna and, Lil, and Travis Scott. It's a good song. It's kind of aged better. It's aged better. It was the best song on the album. It's a good like, song. It was, it was the most successful song on the album. Let me say that. It's a good song. Yeah, yeah I, I like I, I, I like it now more. Uh, maybe because Drake posted the lyric. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, let me revisit it. It's actually a slapper. Munching. But is he being like, what's the point of that? Is he being like, like, oh, fuck you? Like, why, why, you know what I'm saying? And in Toronto, that's like more personal. Yeah. I was talking to you guys yesterday about them. Like, this is more personal. Like, he probably cares about the Nav situation more than we realize. I don't think and so. And then Nav nah, he does. is the weekend's artist. You know, Nav is the weekend's I, artist. I don't, I don't think he cares that much about Nav. I think he does because his young boys are um, responding. His OVO affiliates that are from Toronto, they're like. Yes, Baka Not Nice made a post saying, are you guys talking about picking sides? Huh. We, 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 we. Uh, slide on on the lives. It's like, whoa, you gonna kill people, Baka? Baka, don't go back to jail. Don't go back to jail, Baka, again. Like, we don't want you to catch a body now. Is it this serious? You know what I'm saying? Is it that serious, Baka? Like, what are you talking about? Bro, these niggas are from a country where you have to illegally smuggle dr uh, guns to get them, bro. You know how hard it is to get a gun in Canada? In Canada? <laughs> like, it's almost impossible. <laughs> and on top of that, at Drake's show uh, two nights ago, Chubbs, the whole OVO crew walked out, and then Lil Durk followed, and what song was playing? Future. My savages, my savages, my savages. So it's like, they're playing chess here. They're playing yeah. chess here. My thing is, is that I feel like, and I was thinking about this the other day, especially when I seen the party shit and like how Metro is headlining a show. He's his special guest is Party Next Door. Yeah. Um, I was, um, I feel like what's going on here is. Do you think Party picked the side? I think Party picked the side. 
Nah, I don't think so, man. I think part. Yo, no bullshit, bro. It does say Metro Boomin special guest at this cowboy. Yeah, like for those who don't know, for the reference, it's called Cowboys Music Festival, a festival that happens every year. Headlining was Metro Boomin already, but they just announced today Metro Boomin and co-headlining Party Next Door as Metro Boomin's special guest. Yeah. Happened in July. They may be Why? feeding that weird as fuck. Yeah, they that's may be, weird. They that may be feeding weird. into it, or what could be happening is, is that what I've been waiting for? Because <laughs> yo, I've been, yo, I've been waiting for this for a moment, bro. Because Vic, you have to be honest here. This guy likes chaos. I love chaos, but I also it's love fun, the bro. fact that Drake is finally being humanized. Mm. This is someone in the industry that has been like so far up. He is like this godlike figure for some of his fans. Yeah. Um, no one feels like they can touch him. The push the T thing kind of had a kink in his arm. I remember Joe Budden was talking about that. Yeah. How that kind of made him look a little more mortal. I think Drake has created many enemies. I think Drake's whole formula when he was in o when he's in OVO is I'm gonna pick up this artist. I'm gonna use this sound. I'm gonna get on it. I'm gonna keep myself relevant using this sound. I feel like some people feel jaded about it. Yeah. I can imagine a nigga like Nav feels jaded about it. I can imagine Party feels jaded about it. I would love to hear what I love McConan thinks about all this bullshit and how he feels about it. I can imagine Division has something to say about it. I, I, I would love to hear what I love McConan has to say about it, but not right now. Not right. But you get what I mean, though. There I know are what you mean. There are people that are frustrated. Give it a with month Drake. for McConan yeah. to speak out. You know, you know the weekend's pissed. You know the weekend's. I want to hear the weekend speak about it, bro. Because if the weekend gets up there and says, "Nigga, I wrote Take Care. I bro. wrote his best album." Bro, the weekend. Bro, The Weeknd has promoted that music video today. He posted like five screenshots of that music video, like hanging with Metro. I'm like, this nigga's picking a side. Bro, look at this <laughs> real beef. It feels like the Avengers. This feels like the fucking oh, Avengers shit. happening. And I love J. Cole. I love Drake. Fa two, of my, two of my favorite artists. Uh, but I am picky Team Kendrick. Solely because I want to see how this ends. I want to see how this ends. I want to see what happens to Drake. I want smoke, bro. I also love violence. Yeah, I, yeah, I want to see smoke. I want smoke. I don't know. I want Ken I want Kendrick to be the one to to make the fucking game what it used to be and tell these motherfuckers to man the fuck up and start dropping shit. Because right now this is corny. Rizzo, this is um today also Drake's dad you know made a post. That Dennis pa Graham, that Papa's making posts, bro. Come on. <laughs> read um, read um, Marlon, please can you read um? Let's read um his dad's <laughs> caption. Yo, I am about to drop some new. <laughs> my fucking goodness. <laughs> Yo, I'm about to drop some new music and I am not sure if it's going to sell. But I'm going to call some of my homies and get them started a beef with Drake and get them to unfollow him. And that's going to make my shit shoot up to number one. I'm sure this is going to work. So let me get some people on board for this and watch what kind of attention this gets. Yo, this is actually funny as fuck. It is. Look back his dad should unfollow him. Yo, his dad is, is like hilarious. But like, so he's blaming who of doing this. So he's trying to say that. Drake and Metro? So Metro and Future did this to get a I number mean, Future one. and Metro, my bad. The thing is, this is when you know his dad's old. Metro and Future didn't need this to hit number one. There's yeah. nothing else that came out that week. It was going to be number one. Yeah. Yeah. This was never about that. This was truly about something your son has been doing this entire time. It's yeah. about, like, we have to be accountable. Drake is not a great person. Like, he's not the best human being. He is a piece of shit. He, he, has, he had a jersey last night or two nights ago that said piece of shit. He, you know. Bro, he wore Chris Paul jerseys to troll Kanye because he knew yeah. Kanye West's wife was getting fucked by Chris Paul. It's not a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is not a good person. He wore different eras of the no, jersey. It's, true. it's, it's true. not a good guy. He's the petty king. So I can imagine he has some enemies and he got niggas that are like, all right, let's actually get all his enemies in one room and let's make some shit happen. And I also never really liked how um Drake like has been playing into the idea of X. potentially killing X. Like, I don't yeah. like that. I don't like that. I never liked that. I think that's corny. Yeah. That mob life shit. Um, it's I crazy. I would like to see if this beef really brings out that side of Drake where we're like, wow, hold, hold up. He's actually this dark ass fucking guy or he's really just a softy playing to be hard. I would love to Drake's see Drake's dad did speak, I think, last time with the, was it the Pusha T diss? I think he made a yeah. post or something about it as he well. Did. So he's been speaking out. Obviously, he's a dad, so the dad's going to defend him. Yeah. Um, but is it deeper? Does Drake, you know, and his dad have a have a, have a talk about this? Is there actually like a personal beef between Future? I mean, his old and his dad, dad decided to sometimes. post this. You know what I'm saying? So um, you think his dad approved this? I mean, like Drake approved. Because if Drake approved, no, this, I don't that's think so. I don't think so. I think I think there's been a past where Drake kind of called out his dad online or told him like just stop. Yeah, he's called. Or he said in an before. interview or something where he was like, "I told my dad to stop" or something. Um, but chill out with the suits. Yeah, I don't know. And then we do have right here what people think is Drake's response, right? So we have Drake's dad responding, saying that he's gonna unfollow people. He thinks people unfollowing people is corny, you know, he has to get their sales up. Maybe he's talking about Nav, everyone, you know, Metro booming. Then we also have yeah, you can put the mic on you. Why try? Then we also have 
this response that people think is talking about Kendrick Lamar. Mm-hmm. Drake at every concert, he speaks, and at the end, he ends it with a speech, motivational speech, right? So you don't think this is aimed? We'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Nah, I want no, People are man. calling Drake Wallow. They're saying Drake is on some Wallow shit. He thinks he's Wallow. <laughs> Bro, it's self-affirmations. Nigga and, wrote in a journal after, I love myself. And then we have it, you know, this because this is the first time he's done this since the Kendrick Lamar song. So he, let's play it for people who haven't heard it yet. Ask me how I'm feeling. I'm going to let you know how I'm feeling. Listen, the way I'm feeling is the same way I want you to walk out of here feeling about your fucking self. Because you know how I'm feeling? I got my fucking head up high, my back straight. Okay. I'm 10 fucking toes down in Florida or anywhere else I go. And I know that no matter what, it's not a nigga on this earth that can ever fuck with me in my life. And that's how I want you to walk out of here tonight. He's having a manic episode. <laughs> no, so. Bro, I pray to God that what? was not his response to Kendrick. But in order to, you know. I don't think it's not. He mentioned it's Florida. You didn't hear you say Florida right there? And move towards the future. Sometimes, sometimes you gotta acknowledge the mistakes that you made in the past, right? 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 Mm-hmm. So this like fucking people's girls, do. Drake. Is that what we talking I'm about here? Yo, I'm I'm not gonna lie, bro. I, this is my first time seeing this. I thought we was about to get like Drake on some Kanye Pablo tour rant. You like, know what I'm saying? It, it, Calling it, everyone bitch ass niggas. Yeah, it didn't oh, go ca- there. camera on him real quick, Mar. You know, <laughs> round, round of applause button. Shout out to Y Try in the building. You know, New England zone. Y yeah, Try yeah, yeah. in the building. Um, Wagwan, Wagwan. But yeah, man, this is um pretty crazy, right? So obviously he's saying a lot of people asking me how I'm feeling. You know, I'm gonna let you know how I'm feeling. Got my head up high. You know, it is a, a sense of it like it comes off like cringy, like mmm. But I do think it's like a motivational thing for the crowd and to get them up. Because Drake does this at every, every concert. I've seen speeches like this all the time. Yeah, but he said people ask me how I'm feeling. That line is like, okay. Yeah, that means you're responding to this situation. And he's saying like, you know, there's not a nigga on this earth, blah, blah, blah. Specifically, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Kendrick Lamar? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's like, he, he might be going through it. Bro, he's journaling. Right I, now, as we I were matter. recording, he posted like a selfie. It's like, why are you still posting selfies? Like... Are you like trying because, to act unfazed? He's, he ain't picking up. He's in Turks Little Baby. I ain't picking up. I'm in Turks Little Baby. Up. He Yo, might not know what to do. This this nigga he has four days off right now between the next concert date. Four days off between concert dates. The way he's sounding, that nigga's in a spa. In a spa. Taking care of himself. That nigga's not rapping. Get, and, you know, and, what, a, you remember, know what a woman said in the comment? Get in the fucking booth, bitch. <laughs> a woman said that, bro. What's wrong with him, bro? You know what's crazy? I feel like, too, the crazy thing is if like... If he tries to come at Kendrick and try to do like a back to back meek situation, mm. that's not gonna play out like it did. So he needs to really figure out the next move, and he don't got enough. He don't got a lot of time. I don't. I don't think it's gonna be a, a diss track. I feel like if anything, he might drop For a single album? or no, no, no. Imagine, imagine. I think it might just be a, a two liner or some shit like that. You know, shit he's done before. I feel like there's definitely gonna be build up to this shit, and that's what I hope for. I'm not gonna lie for you. I like I I hope I hope that it's a build up, and then volume one may, and maybe yeah. there's a back to back, and then you get something from Kendrick. And volume shit. two, I would love that shit. My thing is, bro, Meek is not the lyricist Kendrick is. 100%. No, Doopy Freestyle was targeted towards Kanye and Kid Cudi. Neither of them niggas are the lyricists that's that a Kendrick is. Fuck, that's, but people forgot about that. Meek one. Mill's a battle rapper, bro. That's why I thought he was going to come out and go off. Like, I was waiting. Funk Flex was like, yo, I got the mix song. We going to drop it. Like, everyone was like, oh, shit, this is going to be crazy. Bro, <laughs> nothing happened. Meek is neurodivergent, bro. <laughs> 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 that, nigga, that nigga's not all the way there, bro. My, my, my thing is, I knew the type of person Drake was when he ignored Joe Budden when he was rapping. and has so much to say about him when he became a podcaster. Because Joe gave him a whole album. Yeah, he gave him probably the best diss track of all those diss tracks. Yeah. The wake one, that shit was hard. Yeah, that beat was insane, but he didn't respond back, and it got like two million views. So he heard about it. Oh yeah, no, hundred percent. It had like it was like three songs he did back to back, and that was after the, the French Montana, uh, no uh, stylist Drake, bar. no stylist. You wanna when know what? Get, you wanna know what gets me mad about fucking Drake, bro? He won't. He'll take his time with this or not reply. Right in the music industry, but let it be some other bullshit like. Uh, the journalist reply to him 
What was the other petty shit that Elliot he replied Wilson. to? Elliot Wilson. He took down Bobby Althoff's uh, interview. You know what I'm saying? He'll do dumb, sh- dumb shit like that, but he won't fucking feed into this that he knows that we want. And at the same time, remember we was talking about hopefully he doesn't do anything now because it might ruin Party Next Door's rollout. Roll out. This, yeah. this, and that. So, like, and at the same time, now we got the whole Metro booming Party Next Door headlining this one event and... I do it's, think Party Next Door is going to pull it's out. Shaky, though. bro. I do think Party Next Door is going to pull like out. Yeah, he's going to pull I out. I think it was like a misscheduling type of situation. Yeah, I think he's going to pull just out. trying to get clout. Because Party wouldn't even approve of that post, bro. That post was like gross. They, on their Instagram had like the like that song, and it was playing a Kendrick diss. Gross. Like, why would Party Next Door approve of that? Like, that is crazy. That was yeah. crazy. Drake yeah. literally posted his new single mm-hmm. recently. Like, there's a whole tour happening with Party Next Door, a whole rollout. Something would have to have happened. Like, that's mad weird, bro. Like, I think Drake's going to be like, yo. He's gonna reach out, or party might reach out to Drake, be like, "Yo, I'm, I'm cutting out of this." No, because no, like, no. yo, that's a f- no. He's gonna do. How that. much are they paying him for the for festival? Sure. <laughs> nah, not that. Hundred thousand dollars, maybe. Not that. Like much. Drake could just send him, like, bro, you need the money that bad, party? <laughs> like, what's going on, nigga? Don't pick a side. We gotta pick a side. <laughs> like, where you gonna pick a? Oh, party, you need a hundred grand. Party staying neutral. There's no way he writes for too many people. He's staying neutral. Yeah, yeah bro, yeah. Drake can pay him. Like, if it's a money thing, like. What are you? Are you gonna switch on the team for some bread? Like yeah. Cowboys festival? No, you're not even a cowboy, nigga. Like, what are you? There's not even like. There's not even country artists. Like, why is a Cowboys music festival and we got party next door headline with Metro Boone? It shouldn't even make no sense, bro. I'm telling you, I told this to Vic on Sunday. I'm a firm believer. Drake is terrified of doing the same thing he did with Push, where he came. He doesn't in, want to fuck up again. He doesn't want to just walk into the den and attack someone. And then out of nowhere, some deep, dark secret he has in his closet comes out on him. Mm. I'm telling you, Kendrick knows that's something. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. That's a, that's they a fair all point. know something. You got to tell me they haven't done nasty shit together? Him and Future haven't done nasty shit together? I think they slept with each other's girls. But Future doesn't care about that. Future said it, bro. That we shared this bitch. Why are you mad? Yeah. So I think... And so- there's that whole, that whole rumor that what would Pluto do is actually a diss to Future. Cause he's like, oh, since you fucked my bitch, now I gotta fuck her. Like, I, nigga, honestly, what? what Pluto do doesn't even come off as a diss. It kind of comes off as like, like a praise if you think about it. What would Pluto what do? Pluto he probably do fuck her on this whole. So yeah, I do the same. Right. You know question what I'm is the question bro, is. Bro, that was his treacherous twin, bro. He's hurt. They're both hurt. My Man, this is, is crazy to me though. Like, what the fuck? Like, really think about it, but right? Then, but then uh, we got we got we got Future calling him a fake friend. And which then Drake last album. Two things about the last album. One thing is the album, when you listen to the album, a lot of that shit is really about Rihanna. Like yeah, he's yeah. directed shots at yeah, Rihanna. Yeah. It's like a Rihanna album. Like he's yeah, talking about yeah. a lot of shit, right? You think ASAP's gonna be on this next album, the future one? I don't Maybe. think so. Maybe because Metro Boomin is close with ASAP Rocky. ASAP yeah. Rocky was on Metro Boomin's last album. And hey, you've been talking she about my hard. BM for a while, yeah. you bitch ass nigga. It's he was time also for me on the Spider Man soundtrack. He was. With Metro. Yeah, yeah, that's true. ASAP yeah. Rocky gives this thing a verse. Because <laughs> ASAP Rocky can rap. He just can't make good music, but he can rap, bro. Right now, I'll right t- now in his career. No, geez. I'll tell you this much. You're the you're the only I'm person thinking. right now this excited for ASAP Rocky this or ASAP Rocky can rap. <laughs> that is a rapid ass. I'm New York shocked. Nigga. You just you just you just got you you almost because jumped Vic, out of your you chair. You know it's true. You know you know I'm right. Don't he? That he nigga can't. sucks rapping, bro. I've said that shit my whole you life. You think he sucks? Hundred percent. Have you heard potato salad? Yo, nigga, I, I don't even eat potato salad. I'm what the fuck this, are we talking about here? I, like I agree with your statement, but flipped. I think it's be- the music's better than the actual rapping. There, there are some very bad Rocky. Bars. He has some of the best music videos of all time. Back in the day, Rappy right now, ASAP Rocky right now. One of the flyest than niggas. Love, I love Rocky. One of the flyest Rocky. niggas in hip hop history. Yeah, what? rapping wise, going out like trunks, him. asthma pump, bro. Nah, bro. That was bro. one of the worst things I've ever heard in my. Life. <laughs> and I love Rocky, bro. Listen, potato salad is an amazing freestyle. He kept up with this nigga. Ty, uh, nigga, stop Ty- talking about food. You're making me hungry. <laughs> you never Christ. heard that with Tyler? With Tyler? What was that? Yeah. Is that off of the Griselda album? No, nah, it was like a random one. Because ASAP Rocky incredible. did have they a good ass Paris. verse on a Griselda album. They were on Paris. You don't remember the Paris video where they're with Jaden Smith in the car? Yeah, that was incredible. Okay, 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 okay. Nigga, they went, to- they went bar for bar with each other, bro. They okay. were hard. He's not okay. late night. He's not late. That was a thing. But like, if we if we talking rapping Rocky and put all of his albums together. The only together, way he can have a good ass verse though. He got better over the years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, I'm going to give you that. Bro. Yeah, I'll give you that. If Rocky has something on Drake he from Rihanna. She. You know what I'm saying? Who, who's bitch? You're not well, sex. What, 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 Pink. No, 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 no. Whose bitch is it? Well, I mean, he ain't going to say it? that. That's, he exposed that shit already. Whoa, whoa, whoa. His, his fucking ticking balls. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, they ain't going to be right, nothing right. like that. It's not the only thing is going I didn't be, see him, Marlon. You must have. What you mean? You replayed that shit. If anything, the only thing he can say is that he likes it up the bar or some shit. He's going to confirm what Kanye said on Vultures. What did Kanye say? Whose kid is it? Remember the threesome? And they're not sure whose actual kid is. When You remember, nigga. He said that... Whose um, kid, nigga? Nigga, whose kid? Yes. 
Fucking what, so for, for for reference, yes, Adonis's B Adonis's mom, she got a train ran on her by yeah. ASAP. Allegedly, we don't know. Allegedly, this. Jesus Christ. Um, Drake is someone else, and they don't know that the the, jo- the running rumor is they don't know exact. They don't know if it's actually that's, that's, Drake's, kid, that's Drake's kid. Drake's kid. That, looks like, that looks like Sandra that Graham. Bro. Obviously, that's Sandra Graham. But he could play into the whole thing of <laughs> blue eyed, uh, blonde hair, the Fira. He could definitely be like, yo, your BM. He got curly hair. That was me too. Drake had curly hair back then too. He bro. could say that. His mom has that DNA in that kid. That's the purest Jew, Jew boy I've seen in my life. But bro. that's still a bar. If you tell me, if you tell a nigga I ran a train on your BM, that's no, that, crazy. that is crazy. God bless. But um, you know, <laughs> I do so think God bless. I do think um, Little Yachty did say when he was interviewed. You what know, first of all, fuck? by the way, Little Yachty, get the fuck away from Drake Run away. for about ninety days. <laughs> we do not need any young nigga influence. Let him cook up. And get in his bag, hide Please. in a closet, hide in his room, wherever his mansion, dark room vibes. We need we need him to cook up. We don't Please. need no young shit. Yeah. None of that shit. Yeah. None of that, bro. Kendrick, don't get baby Keem. You guys need to put these young motherfuckers away <laughs> and get in your own bag. We don't need no, no spark of energy, inspiration from... No. <laughs> nah, fuck the youth. No, we don't need no young <laughs> Let shit. Let baby Keem and J.I.D. beef with each other. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. We don't need that, right? But Lil Yachty did say in an interview, he was like, yo, this album... It's like the shit he's saying on here is like the craziest lines, blah, blah, blah. That shit was terrible. Right? But. Yachty's no. A1 dick writer, yeah, bro. No, no. Because he said, what he said, I think it was his most controversial album yet, yeah, right? Yeah. And technically, when you deep dive more into the shit he was saying, it was. Because everyone was mad at Drake. Yeah. Nigga, Megan Thee Stallion. Like, yeah. everyone was talking about it. People were like, why are you coming at Rihanna for the whole week? The Rihanna, the Navy, the Rihanna fan base was coming at Drake for like a whole month, damn but near. I, I feel like the one before that was more controversial, the 21 one. Yeah, so because he was yeah he was saying some wild shit on that. Was, I think this one is and to the point that I think Yachty knew that the what what Pluto do shit was to was future. about future yeah that's and Yachty's on that, that song but yeah he, yeah in the background yeah 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 he is yeah that's a lot of dick eating <laughs> he's a dick eater bro <laughs> nah, that's crazy that's a lot of dick eating you add lip at a diss get a job that's a job bro that's a job that's a job add lips on a Drake song you probably get him. Fifty. You ad libbing on a diss track towards future, which he fifty thousand right. dollars a month just from royalties for that. You never know. You're bro. from Atlanta. Have some shame. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> you have some fucking shame. But Get is Yachty picking throat, a side, bro? Is Yachty picking a side? I hope he's not picking. Nobody the... cares. Yo, it's you don't understand. Who the future... fuck cares? No, they do because Marlon Future. Man, fuck Yachty, Future's bro. God in Atlanta. Calm down. Dude. Future's God. I love Yachty. Yo, if, if honestly, there are a lot of people. If you go to Atlanta, there are people who will look you in your eyes and be like, "Future is three times bigger than Drake." Yeah. Like, oh, someone, yeah, someone, for sure. For who sure. was it that yeah. tweeted it? But you guys remember there was a controversy a couple weeks ago, a couple years ago. Like every podcast was talking about it when um someone tweeted like. Um, future is like the Jay Z, or is bigger than Jay Z. Like yeah, future's the Jay Z of Atlanta. Yeah, and then people were like, "What are you talking about?" And then everyone in Atlanta's like, um, yeah. "No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's a, that, for sure." And if you're from Atlanta right now, you have two options: you stay in the middle, or you pick a side. Because mm-hmm. if you pick, if you pick Drake's side, Atlanta's dumping you right where you at, nigga. They're not gonna like you for that. Little baby over. and Little Dirk. Well, Little, uh, Little Dirk's not from Atlanta, but Little, Little baby. baby, uh Rilo Rodriguez and Forty Two Doug. Well, Forty Two Doug's not from Atlanta. But they're all technically, they're all the same click energy. Well, little baby enough is like, bro, what are you doing? Yeah, they were in a club laughing, you know, pin pictures with Drake, like yeah. laughing next to him. Pick blah, that blah, side, blah. watch how you lose your cut, your state. You know what I'm saying? And there was a rumored uh, thing. First of all, Drake loves the strip clubs. You the know, thing God is, little baby got to stick with Drake because Drake is the only one who can Revive flourish his, his fucking career. <laughs> Listen, but that's the take with everything, right? For two things. So there was a rumor that Drake was in a strip club. There was a photo of him going viral in a strip club, a video. Like on his phone typing, they were saying that that's when he really received, like, hey, Kendrick dropped the verse right at midnight and he heard it and he was getting texts about it, right? But then there's certain people uh, saying, like, by 6 p.m. The, on Thursday night, 6 p.m., they were already being notified that there's a Kendrick verse. Like, industry label execs, representatives were talking about it. So if they were getting a heads up, you think Drake didn't get the heads up? He might have known. Yeah. Also, there's rumors that Drake been knowing this shit. That's why he'd been dissing the weekend and like subbing. Future he's and getting ready. you know, no, so he might have been getting but, ready. But but Kendrick's shit is too is too too soon. Because yeah, obviously matter. he obviously he wrote that after first person shooter released. exactly, and that released what that a released month a, and a half ago. Yeah, with the, it came out with the EP. No, Big no, game. first person shooter was on the album, but then it, and at the Rolling Loud, like we said, he was that's all, they didn't even play that verse. So obviously, I the the, the Kendrick verse is new. It's new. Might be literally a week new. 
or a couple of days now. Or they had it this whole time. They've been keeping a secret. And they just added it. Mm-hmm. But Could I feel be. like if that was the case, that Travis wouldn't have fucking begged for that track, bro. Or Travis knew too, and Travis doesn't like Drake right now. I don't know. I don't think Drake, Travis picked the side. I don't think Drake so. played the bro, Travis because, Scott bro, song last night. Tra- Travis Travis was on Kanye shit when he was be- uh, beefing with Drake, and then right after that he was on Drake's album. I feel like I feel like when it comes to Travis, bro, he he never picks a side in anything. He's neutral. He's he always sure like, like he's that. always been neutral ever since the beginning of the Drake sure. and Ye beats. Yeah, he'll be like. He'll bring he'll bring Ye out <laughs> right. and then he'll be on the Travis. No, if you think about it, ever since um Astro World. His mic's on, right, Marlon? Right? Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, bro. ever since Astro World, bro, he has never he's been in the middle. Like he just yeah. does I think he's just trying to make his bread and he don't really care. Because then sickle yeah. mode. Really and sick, yeah, sickle mode. Drake yeah. This but, Kanye, but, tra- but Kanye but had no idea. Uh, tra- Travis had no idea. Travis didn't yeah. know. The Travis thing- <laughs> didn't know. Yeah, no, nah, exactly. it's bullshit. Travis but, didn't know. Here's the issue because without Ka- <laughs> Kanye, literally made Travis's career. Yeah. Um, days before the road, it was supposed to be a gross tape. He took it, he ex- executive produced it, and then from there, he started executive producing almost every album. Like he would be in the room, you would help him. Nigga, even the album that just came out, you three get, of those, three of those. Give some credit though. Give, give Ti some credit too though. Ti, yeah. yeah, he has. A, he was uh, signed with Ti too. Yeah, yeah, yeah he yeah. was Grand okay. Hustle slash uh, yeah, Good yeah, Music. Yeah, yeah, I'll give Ti. I'll give Ti his thing. Here was my thing. To Paris. Bro, this is where he pisses me off. He says that bullshit about sickle mode. Bro, Kanye gave you three of the songs on that album. They were supposed to be on Yeezus, God's Country, and like two other ones. And you still letting Drake diss him on your album? Like, yo, Travis be yeah, but weird. Sickle Travis mode be on, weird. Sickle Mode wasn't on the album. No, but I mean, my point is, Travis has consistently shown that it don't matter what Kanye does for him. He's still just going to let each other diss each other. Yeah. Like, I he's think, not going to pick a side just, at all. I think he's just there for the fucking sport, bro. But one has done more for, for you than the other has. And that's what kind of frustrates me. But, right but, paid. Yeah, but he's yeah. been on both sides, bro. He's been, ju- you know what I'm saying? What do you guys think about this take, right? Let's talk about this. People are saying when it comes to everyone that we're talking about, it's all tied down and back to Drake, right? They need Drake. People are saying the industry needs Drake. When it comes to Pusha T, his biggest moments of his career was the Drake issue, right? Meek Mill as well, right? Especially even after they ended their beef. His biggest song, most streamed to this day, even I think bigger than Dreams and Nightmares, is a song with Drake after their their whole that's beef. A, that's a fact. Right? You know what I'm saying? I think it was uh, Going Bad. Yeah. Going Bad. Yeah. On, off Championships. Big record, right? And then prior to that, his biggest song was Rico. But then that was like a beef, whatever, blah, blah. He was like, he was dissing me on the song the whole time. The whole thing. You know, so Drake <laughs> does that. He disses people the whole time. You know, never know. Right? And then connect everyone else, right? This album, you can say... There's a lot of things. We got to be honest. Kendrick Lamar's last album, niggas was not rocking with it like that. Uh, that's a fact. We have to be honest. That's if you fact. weren't a Kendrick Lamar fan. That's a fact. The only one who was arguing you that was, really, was that Wongo. You, yeah, Wongo loved it. You know what I'm saying? Or, or, or you said he wasn't? Or was he on? He was the only one defending yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But Wongo's <laughs> like a, a Kendrick Lamar fan, right? Yeah. So who was not defending it? Kendrick Lamar Like fan, real deal Kendrick Lamar fans were standing it by it. Like, um, I wasn't. I'm not saying nah, that. Tyler nah, Creator like was that. standing by it. Like he was like tweeting about it. So this, like since last year, for years, he kept like championing that album. Uh, Charlemagne the God, right? We know why also because like he's team, if he's picking a team, he's team Kendrick, especially over Drake. But he was like, to this day, he's like, he thinks it's like the most important uh, album in hip hop history, he said. I, I was like, what? For nah. me personally, like, I think the take, I, what I love about Kendrick is he does like a 3 1 situation. This is my take. Like, yeah. he'll make two albums for his fans and then he'll make one album for himself. Mm. And mm. I think this, the new one that came out, that was like, yo, this is a for me type of thing. I'm giving it to y'all. Take what you, take what you want from it. And then, I the, believe that. you know what I'm saying? So I think. When it comes to that, I was a fan of it because I knew that album was just about... Per- that album was about nothing more about his personal growth and where he is with his life. Mm-hmm. And sometimes niggas don't give a fuck about all that because they're like, yeah. yo, Kendrick, we want X, Y, and Z. And then sometimes he's like, yo, I don't care. This yeah. is about me. Yeah. Compared to other artists like Future or Drake, they're going to give the people what they want to yeah, hear. Yeah. Drake is like, I'm going to give the people what they want to hear, but I'm going to do it my way. Mm-hmm. And I'm my, and I'm and since I'm Drake, you either going to adapt and understand that I shift culture and whatever I say fucking goes so you're gonna like it anyways Yeah. or you'll just fucking hate me which is cool too yeah 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 I mean you Drake know? says it himself he said I'll drop a banger and uh, years later they'll call it a classic yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. And, like to, and to build on to and to build on to what you were saying about the industry needs Drake I feel like they absolutely do because Drake shifts culture there's not we don't have a lot of artists right now that shift culture yeah we have Ye we have Drake we got Kendrick and 
does Cole shift culture to you guys? No. <laughs> Did Cole? <laughs> that no. no was that no was too confident, bro. No. So I, get, I think he yeah. does. So it depends, like like and what and what parameter what are we talking about, bro. When has Cole when has Cole ever changed the sound? Cole had his own sound that people like try to adopt. Me. Cole had his own sound that people try to adapt. There's so many rappers that people you, you can just be like, Travis no, you're trying to that's a direct influence. Yeah, you're to, trying to rap like J. Cole. Do, are they successful? Well, ah. they're not J. Cole. <laughs> it can't be J. Cole. J. Cole's the like because there's a only prime. one that he got. He got away with it. Nigga, you can even argue that J. Cole is the most lyrical rapper of all time. That bitches like. What other lyrical rapper do bitches like? Okay, J. Cole. So let me say this. His biggest fan base is probably girls. Yeah, but Sorry. let me say this. Let me say this. That's cr- that's you don't see that ever happen. You can that, say Drake, ma- yes, Drake is lyrical, but J Cole's pure lyrical. That's mainly because I, he he's, he was a storyteller. Yeah, first. he was a storyteller. He told very emotional, personal stories. I am I gonna here's my thing. What are we calling culture shifting? So for me, I'll I'll explain that. For me, culture shifting is when I put something out, the world stops. When I put something out. The world, I dictate how things move forward in the sense of sound, in the sense of style, in the sense of, like, how people perceive they need to move, like, go moving going forward. And when this person drops, everybody's talking about it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Jayco so, does that, bro. So let me say this. Let me acknowledge you what I want. So, Drake, I don't think that applies to Drake. That's yeah. me personally. I think Drake introduces us to existing sounds. That are picking up steams in certain regions of the country. Mm. I think Drake did he it with sol- Atlanta. He solidifies the sound. Yes, I think he did it with Migos. That's why people say, "Well, the industry needs Drake." I think yes, we need Drake to introduce us. He introduced the mainstream to certain sounds, but I'm never gonna say Drake got up one day and made a sound on his own that everyone adopted. Hell no, I can't even find it. Good luck. It doesn't exist. He's always taken other people's sounds that exist and made them hot. Put him in the mainstream, and I respect him for that, and that's important because it takes an ear to hear something and say, yo, this could blow up and be like on some real shit. What he did with the Migos, what he did with Party, what he did with The weekend, The UK sound. The UK sound. Now, when it comes to Kendrick, mm. do I think Kendrick shifts culture? <laughs> no. What, what has Kendrick's music shifted? The music, the sound. Maybe in the West Coast. There's been I'm impact. not going to speak on the West Coast. There's been impact. impact. I, think, I, think about- that, I think all three shift the culture. I'm talking about shift music. Yeah. Shifting music. Just think about how the ser- sound. Think about how serious music got and shit like that when he dropped the control verse. That I'll give him. But I'm talking about when do. Kendrick made a song, because Pimp the Butterfly, no one took that jazz shit and ran with it. Bro, they were talking they made a whole class about it. They did. But, <laughs> but did not right away. Not right away. Did the right artist away, but... take it? No. D- okay, J. Cole. I'll give you that J. Cole impacts certain demographics. I'll give you that J. Cole has inspired a young generation of rappers, but to say that J. Cole like had the impact that someone like Party Next Door did on music, the the impact that Kanye West had on music, maybe not on music overall. Said, that's what I mean. That's what I call the impact, impact is there though. Yeah, but I mean impact on music. That's what I mean. When you shift that's culture, right. I'm you're shifting the music. Because we're not gonna act like J. Cole dropping all these features and these freestyles in the past couple years haven't made niggas like want rap. Like, that's what makes people Hell call yeah. out no, yeah. the I agree. bullshit. Yeah. I agree. Like, all the yeah. shit we've been hearing, these vlogs and shit that we've been covering in here, we're like, yo, like, that's the real, that's what people want. Like, yeah. everyone's talking about it like they want that. Like, yeah. the, oh, he's I making agree. niggas want to rap again. Yeah. So we got to give him that. Yeah. And even with Drake, the new uh, J. Cole, uh, uh, not J. Cole, the new Big Sean's been dropping. Everyone's saying he sounds like Drake. Yeah. Who's the number one, what's the number one hip hop song right now on the charts? Jack Harlow. Who do people say Jack Harlow sounds like? Drake. Drake. But Drake sounds like these New York niggas. Stop it. On that album, he does. <laughs> what album? I'm not talking about. I'm talking about in general because you're saying in yeah. general. I'm saying like I niggas. Like, there's a lot of Drake mini me's. We can't yeah. say that there's not. And Jack also, Carlos is one of them. Another thing I should have said: shifting the white. culture also means like are people are people following your formula? Mm. I think when it comes to Drake, Drake has created a formula that a lot of people cop either follow or copy. Like you said, Jack Carlos. But, uh, but didn't like we that, just? But, my bad. But didn't we just argue the fact that he picks up on them flows and 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 like. Mainstreams them though, yeah. By the same time, it's like if he doesn't like it, it, we have to give credit to where it's due because, like, like he, like bro was saying, it takes a year to understand and find that talent and then be like, yo, this is gonna be next, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna be the one who make it next. And we learned that he he's been doing that for so long, yeah. That like, bro, if we go back to the McCone intake. Like he's been doing that since what? That was 2016, 2017 when he hopped on. He did it before that with Migos. Be- be- before that with Migos, but the cool thing about the McConing thing that I will always give Drake mm-hmm. is that 
that sound was so ahead of its time, yeah. it was not going to be as big as it was if Drake didn't do that. I agree. You know what I'm saying? So like, I, I got to give it credit to what it's due. That's why I feel like Drake shifts culture because yeah. he he's a visionary when it comes to the music. But yeah. they're also like the Yeas and the Travises who are visionaries in the sense of they just shift music, whatever. When they drop something, that's where we're gonna follow it. They don't, don't give a fuck if we're ahead of its time or where it's at or whatever. Yeah. Because like to this day, Yeezus is my favorite Ye album, and I think that is like it changes the, culture, bro. That was like the greatest ch- ch- culture change. Yeah. I feel like of our generation. I can even put X on that list. Oh yeah, hundred yeah, yeah, percent. Yeah. This is my 100%. point. D, we're talking about people who like got up in the morning, made a song. It was their song. Their motivation was this song. They didn't hear someone and saw the vision. That That's kind of where I differentiate Drake from these people. Mm. There's a very fine line between you made this and spinning you right found now. this. You spin right now. I look at Drake like I look at what Diddy was to rap in the 90s. Sheesh. Um, Diddy was a pioneer in the 90s in the sense of like, you could hear a sound and be like, that's a hit. I think Drake has the same year. That's a hit. That's a hit. That's a hit. Um, but when people talk about shifting like the musical sound, like I think you have to participate in the creation process to be able to say you did that. That's me personally. But I get I know, it. Man. I hear that take. I'll never. I, I, there's not. There's not much um, Drake. Um, you know, hate for me or not hate, but just like. Bro, everyone's everyone who's collaborated. We're not hating. It's not hating. hating. It's like for better terms, but you know, you guys are some haters up in here. Um, I'm Team OVO. It's funny because I'm Team OVO, nigga. I don't know what you want me to say. I literally sat here and said Drake was the greatest rapper of all time. (laughs) I got (laughs) slaughtered for it. Ain't no one defend me. (laughs) He was in those comments, bro. He was in those comments. He was in those comments (laughs) agreeing with these niggas, bro. He was on his burner. He's like, oh, yeah, I agree. Like, nigga, what? What the fuck? All of these guys' biggest songs. To this day, most streamed, it's Little Baby, of Drake, et cetera. Gonna, yeah. Yes, we it's can argue that. Yes. Drake. Yes. Yeah, Drake put on Kendrick. Without Drake, where is the industry right now? I agree. Remove Drake from the industry. It, Drake is our With Diddy. all his controversy, with all his beefs, with Boy. everything he's done, remove Pause. him. No Diddy. A, the <laughs> industry is bland as fuck. Isn't there an argument that bland he's a, that as he's a, hell. That right, he was an industry Don't plan? do Party. Oh, we know, because he discovered Party. Don't do Kanye like that. I, remove NX. Drake. You're going to have to remove The Weeknd. You know what I'm saying? You're going to remove a lot of people. You might have to remove the Migos. You're going to remove a lot of people. Their biggest moments, that cosign that Drake gives you, is like that shit in the culture. Oh, my God. Like, you have God. to acknowledge that. My introduction with, to Baby with, Keem with, was Drake. Drake posted him on a story. Oh, he's at Baby Keem's concert? I'm like, wait, so oh, you, I got to hear I got to check Drake's this guy out. Wait, so you think, wait, hold on. Like, Jesus the Drake Christ. cosign is... Like underrated. But that's not so for wait, everyone though, because there's I mean, some yeah. artists that he's co-signing. That where the fuck are they? But I think a lot of them take fault because you niggas don't got the fire. You ain't dropping the fire unless it's personal shit. Obviously, McConan got smacked up or whatever. That's some personal shit. You know what I'm saying? He went through shit. He got he got touched. Right? God bless. That's wild. Not sexually, but you know what I'm saying? Like he got touched up. Uh, detail was a detail. The producer that the Baca mm-hmm. allegedly or Chubbs and them jumped. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So that's some like, people just fumble too, bro. Because look at the Fetty Wap situation. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like Fetty, Fetty Wap was horrible with business. And I look at Fetty Wap, free Fetty Wap. So, so he's in jail. Let me ask you a question. Was selling Vic. that Fetty Wap, honestly. No Drake, because my argument is these sounds will still exist. They just won't be as in, they won't be as popular as Drake allowed them to be. You think without Drake, these sounds just die? Because I, I think Migos think so. still exists in Atlanta. I think the South still... I think Migos still have success I in the South. I think they South. exist, but not to the level that we see it yeah. as right now. And I can agree with that. I'll tell you that right yeah, now. It's because see, of look, Drake that... They Drake get, makes shit that's regional, national. We and get from it. national, we get it, it goes then, international. He's but P. Diddy. Then, but then they call him a fucking culture not vulture. Not sexually. Not sexually. But, but then they call, him, they call him a culture vulture. Yeah, but that's ignorant niggas. Yeah, that's ignorant niggas. Yeah, I get that. But like... I've never called him that. And let's say you call him that. Maybe if you look at the definition, maybe it's a good way... That you can look at it. I'm Every word that. has a good interpretation. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, weird. Okay. If you look up weird by definition, it's not really a negative word. It's just different. It's just not. It's different. It's and different. niggas be like, oh, he's weird. Oh. Yeah, I'm weird, nigga. What the fuck? It's, it's okay to different. be weird. You know what I'm saying? Embrace being weird. So like every is just depends how you're interpreting things. But he maybe is a culture vulture. You know what I'm saying? In reality, we have to acknowledge it. Like the guys, like that big me. Reality right now in the past decade is really Drake. We're talking about big me. It is not Kendrick Lamar. We have to be honest. <laughs> but let me ask you a question. We're talking us. about lyrics. Okay. Kendrick Lamar. But overall, bro, we have to stop it, Noel. Okay. okay. You know that it's Drake. 
let me just say this. He's calling him out. Popularity, yes. But when creating the music, because this is what I hate. They always say, oh, Drake need, we needed Drake. Drake needed them. Oh. But, yo, yo, there is no take care without Weekend. He, he wrote it. He wrote it. Like, he wrote it. Stop he doing wrote that. it. He wrote Nigga, it. he wrote three songs. He wrote like five, six of them. No. The biggest ones. The Weekend wrote three songs on take care, and they want to give the I'm whole album to Drake. I'm going to look this shit up. Look it up. I'm going to look this shit up. That's Cap. I'm going to look this shit up. That's fabricated. Who wrote views? Who ex who helped executive produce views? If you do not admit it was Party division, door? it was division. Oh yeah, division. But that's his artist. That's what but they're supposed to do. Point. Yo, we have to also admit that them niggas got bags for that. You but, think them niggas did that shit for free? But my point that's is that's what shops admit. This is why I hate music because no one wants to admit that music is a collaborative process. The, the weekend, they want to solely give credit to Drake. The weekend had five contributions on Take Care. Oh, how many songs on the album? There's like tw 18. 25. 18. And the, with the, the deluxe, it's like 25. All right. And the deluxe was Which one of the five were they? Uh, which five of the more were they? It's uh, cool love. Fuck the five. Shot, the whole album is classic. Shot for me, a crew group. love, cameras, good ones, uh, go interlude, practice, and the ride. Nigga, those are some classic songs, bro. It's not Marvin's room, nigga. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> Vic, you have to admit. It's not Marvin's room. You have to admit. <laughs> Here's the thing. I will give Drake his credit any day of the week. Drake is I the still don't know who the fuck Marvin is. Drake is the greatest rapper of all time. You need to stop. But you have to admit, Vic, the rap, I mean, music is a collaborative process. Drake is not the sole reason he's had this success. These people no, have no, helped, 100%. No, no. These people have helped him get here. Yes. But I'm not saying that for everyone. I wouldn't say that for everyone. Certain people, yes. Right? Yeah. Future, I think, when we talk about Mount Rushmore's, in reality, I think is Drake, Kendrick, J. Cole and Future. That's the Mount Rushmore. I and people don't want to take it. People don't want to say it, right? And if you want to put a fifth head sometimes, you know, depending on his best day, I, I can argue Rick Ross. People in the past wanted to talk about a Nikki, you know, obviously, but Nikki, I feel like it's a different generation. I don't know. You're not gonna put Wayne? No, that's no, a different, different generation. Ge different generation. Oh, that is, yeah. Different generation. Wayne, Jay Z, right. Kanye, they're all different. Different generation. generation. Different, I'm talking about like right now, like in the past decade. Young Thug? No, Future ed edges out Young Thug. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because Future was like before Young Thug. You know? I feel like he was. Yeah, he that was. first mixtape came out before um, um, Barry And Future's six. impact Young is... Young Thug didn't come out. Young Thug came out a little bit after him. Though. Wait. Um, uh, are we talking about Young Thug and Future's who came out first? Yeah. You guys, yo, you guys remember... Future is a part of Dungeon Family. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's, yeah, yeah that's exactly. Exactly. You know we saying? spoke about that. Yeah. He's been around for this, a while. He's been around. Is... Yeah. Outcast. Meathead. Yeah. yeah. That was a yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. So that's no Diddy. Yeah. No Diddy. <laughs> so th that's my only thing is that I I wish people would just acknowledge that Drake has gotten help on his road to success. They just give it to him. It's not fair because people have helped on his albums. He has brought people in to help on his album. But it doesn't, it doesn't and, negate the fact that it's still true that they needed Drake. They needed he needed them yes, but they needed Drake. Let me the ask industry you a right now needs Drake. Remove Drake from the industry right now. It's fucking it's fucking weird. Bro. I'm gonna ask a question. that's gonna blow up this room. But what are we gonna get? Too, but, twenty but, joy but, badasses. We want to hear twenty joy badasses. <laughs> Do you want to hear twenty joy badasses? That's did, crazy. Did, we don't really want that. That's did, crazy. Did Kanye need one? Rick, is enough. Did Kanye need Rick Rubin or did Rick Rubin need Kanye? Or was it just a collaborative effort on those albums? Uh, we we're talking about. Let's talk about like. That's 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 okay. business wise. Okay. Um, what's that famous producer he always does work with? The white guy. Um, no. Over forty. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm talking about. So I'm trying to. What my point is is that every famous artist has always done things collaboratively. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Cause like, okay, perfect. Did Travis need Kanye or did Kanye need Travis? Cause Kanye, he wrote on Jesus. Travis wrote on Jesus and he helped produce. So this is just my point. I feel like mm. we just give the artist soul credit and it's like, bro, you got help doing this and you're trying to act like you're better than everyone else because we worked on a project together. The I think the is take too. is people don't want people to discredit Drake. Like we're going to be like, oh, Kendrick Lamar is coming at him. Blah, 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 blah. No, we get that. But like but he's coming at him because he's Drake. Let's, nigga. Let's... He's not going to pick any opposition. He's picking Drake. Well, yeah, but Drake picked Kendrick to shoot at him. So like who really started this beef? That's the thing. I don't even know. Because on, 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 right? on Take Care, can, Kendrick has a whole, uh, he has a whole interlude. Track, yeah. yeah, I remember. And he then after a, that... I think he has a song. The next time Drake even mentioned him... Well, after that... This is the take, though. Bro, Kendrick's first big tour was Drake. 
Drake no, brought him on he tour. He on opened tour. up yeah, for Drake. Yeah, 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 he's admitted that. No, he's admitted that. He was, he was on video he saying he put He had a whole microphone and he was talking about it. It was also on a video in the street with uh, the other TD members. He's like, yeah, that nigga put Kendrick's me on. most streamed song to this day. What is it? It's not fuck you. It's, fucking it's, it's not in Poetic the Justice. <laughs> nigga, look it up. It's Poetic Justice. Is it? It's literally Poetic Justice with Drake. Let me see. He was in anyways, Mexico over the weekend. Anyways, though, and he performed that song. Anyways. He can't skip that song. He can skip Drake's verse. It might be humble, honestly. But you can't. You can't skip it. You know what I'm saying? My thing is like when niggas it's, is in the industry. It's like that. Love, yeah. humble, money trees. I was gonna say no ways. Poetic, poetic justice. justice. Yeah, no what ways. are you looking on? On Apple Music. That's cap. It was poetic justice yesterday. Check nah. Spotify. Let's see. If you check all time, it's, it's, it's most likely love. Anyways, you said you said you remove you remove Drake out of the thing right now. What kind of music are we gonna get? Some of the bullshit that we have is because of Drake. Yo, he's thank co you. he's co-signed some fucking shitty ass That's artist, true. bro. That's very true. That's very true. No one's saying that. But do you niggas want to hear twenty Joy Badasses? What you got no. against Joey Badass? I'm just saying, like, I get what he do means. we want twenty backpack raps? But the, but the thing is, because that's not the wave right now. Because Drake sets the waves, and you niggas don't want to fucking admit I'm it. Not, I'm not saying I'm not admitting that. He's setting I, waves, I, I'm bro. I'm with you. Me, myself, a lot of the new bullshit waves that are coming up, I think is fucking trash. I don't like the majority of the fucking music that's popping right now. I think he sets waves Let's be when honest. he finds new sounds I with think, his ear. I think the new I'll music that. that's out there right now has, it, it, like, there's no really he's fucking not making music. thoughts like, behind it, bro. He's not creating his own music. Like, that's my point. You're, sh you're showing that love kind of, kind of softly, but the hate's very loud. <laughs> That's the fucking problem, Noel. <laughs> I'm over yo, team over yo. I, yo, I picked my this side. Is so crazy. <laughs> I picked my side. I predict that Dre's gonna respond, and it's gonna be volume one, volume two, volume three. No, you're asking for he's not. I he's think not he's gonna cook up, he's and I think he's he's nah. taking his time. It's gonna be Petty King annihilates I just, everything. I just need him to not fuck up party next door shine. That's all I give a fuck about right now. I think Drake has an adversary that he doesn't know how to handle. I think it's a man who is humble. Who has a wife, who has children, who has chosen his spirit over his body. Good luck, buddy, with your distress. I think he can't skip him though. He cannot not respond. He has to respond to him. It's gonna be a chip. He's gonna it's gonna be a, a knock on his career for the rest of his career if he doesn't respond to Kendrick Lamar. He's gonna have to. And the, and he can't come at the music. And if the music he doesn't, is, if he doesn't, I hope Kendrick pokes at him again. I just I just want a 5 a.m. in Toronto drink, bro. My thing is, what is he gonna diss him that's about? What I, that's that's what I want. The Nigga, bag, what? We have a similar bag. Nigga, I put you on my first tour, blah, 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 all that. That's he can talk about crap. But, but, but it's time, facts, nigga. He, can yeah, spin, he has facts to go against yeah, Kendrick. Yeah, yeah, but Kendrick has admitted to that. So and, and he's not denying that. And what I mean by, yo, bro, what are you going to talk about? The bitches he's fucked? He don't fuck bitches. This is my point, bro. This he is a has man. in the past. You think that K-Dot Dick hasn't been dipping in some chocolate and or some milk or some, something in the past? Then? Yo, what did he do with Pusha T? He was paying niggas to find skeletons in his closet. What if he pays and finds nothing? What then? He's going to find something. Because bro. everyone says the, the secret diss that he had for Pusha T wasn't even about Pusha T because he couldn't find anything. He had to do it about Kanye. This is my point, bro. Drake is going to do research. No, I I, I get, I'll give him the L with that. He's going to do research. And he revealed his, his child. Like, that's like, come on. That's like crazy. Like, that's like insane. <laughs> like, it's hard to top that. I love violence. <laughs> we, in a, we in a very interesting era he, of rap. He revealed his, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But this is my point, Vic. If Vic. You think if he does his research and he can't find nothing about Drake, I mean about Kendrick. What else does he have to rap about him? He's just gonna pick at the old shit. But I put him on this, this, and that. But Kendrick hasn't denied any of that. Exactly. So what else do you have? I think he might not respond, bro. He's gonna respond. He's gonna be strategic though. It might be a J Cole song and Drake. J Cole Dreamville uh, Festival is in two weeks. It's before the next Future album. Nicki Minaj is debut as uh, headlining with J Cole. Does Drake come out? During that, do a set. I'm gonna be honest something. with you, the lineup for this year for Dreamville is not even that good. Does the J. Cole album drop <laughs> before really the Dreamville not. Festival? Maybe Last the Friday before the festival. Think about it. Why no, wouldn't it? Mean, yeah. Or the Friday after. J. Cole would have to drop his album around his festival, I would imagine. And it seems like it's done. My thing is, again. Well, now he has to add the, some verses. The majority, <laughs> the majority of that fucking diss was at Drake. So it's like. Cole probably respond I, out of fun. Yeah, out of fun, right? Out of fun. Or hopefully, obviously, he knows that fucking Kendrick can do his shit. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to give him something so he actually does spit yeah. back at us. Because, I, the, again, the majority of the shit was at Drake. I feel like I, I, I just don't see Kendrick and Cole beef 
Yeah, and I, like let's be honest. I don't think Cole's. I don't think he wants to be for Cole because niggas are like, oh, he's scared of Cole's bars. That's not what it is. Vic is right. Drake is number one. I'll admit that any day of the week. I'll give you a million dollars. Team OVO, nigga. Team OVO. He is. It is big him. It's and, only him. And it's about only, to buy an owl big, chain and, on and eBay. It's, he's and attacking it's because, the head it's dog because he's been doing it that consistently. Consistently, he's been number one consistently. But I think this is the issue, and this is what Kendra's gonna harp on. My nigga, you are a sex animal that is obsessed with being number one. You have no integrity and you have no respect for yourself. That's what he's gonna attack him on. Because that's what he's hinting at. Yeah. That's what he's hinting but at. But Drake, Drake, Drake knows that. He's like in the interviews in the past, he was like, I'm the only rapper still living a rapper lifestyle. And like, he's proud of that. But it's like, you gotta grow up, bro. You're 38, bro. You gotta grow up. Or 36. You know, and when we mm -hmm. called him on growing up, got out on growing up, he was like, hmm, I, I didn't write this to respond to you guys, but here's a Scary Hours 3. And it's like amazing rapping, right? Here's another collaboration with J. Cole. You know, here's more shots at people. You know what I'm saying? The red button. You know, push that red button. Well, you go push it? Kendrick Lamar pushed the red button. You know what I'm saying? So there, there needs to be also, he needs to be held accountable. Drake cannot be <laughs> hypocritical and be like, nah, I'm not going to respond. I'm too uh, cool for this shit right now. I think he's going to respond, guys. But I, I think he's just so. going to, he's, he's taking his time with it. He has to be strategic. You know what I'm saying? Because you think that these guys are strategic? There's a whole other album coming. You think Kendrick Lamar doesn't have an album coming? He's he's fucking hungry. Oh, he's like yeah. he, Bro, he's here. Know, he's here in this podcast you know, right now. You, you want to know what the crazy thing is too, and it like it kind of makes me happy. The fact that Drake has to be strategic to respond back to Kendrick. Yo, you remember when they said Meek Mill was a piece of shit dickhead <laughs> because and that he was pussy Damn. and scared? No, they, they really said, said every this. Day. They, said, they said they said he's a p they said he's a pussy ass nigga because he waited four days to respond. He yeah. was fresh off tour and fresh off an album. And Drake called him out on that. Yeah. But Drake gets to take all the time to be strategic. How right. the goalpost moves for the people we favor. God bless his hearts. I don't know about that, man. Bro, the niggas on Twitter are like that, bro. They're on, they're on Twitter saying, Drake is on tour. We need to understand. Yeah. I'm like, and then someone found this person's tweets where he was calling Meek Mill a bitch for taking too long. Like, bro, y'all niggas move the goalpost for the people you like. This is crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. But I think, I I think it's because that. of the fact, like, it's not... It's a diss verse on a, another nigga's album, another nigga's song. It's a hidden feature. It's not a diss song. That's the difference here, guys. Yeah. He didn't even name them. Obviously, it's obvious. But he didn't name them. You know, and he didn't say. He could have literally named it. He could have been like, yo, I'm talking about, or like, whatever. Say Drake, spell Drake's name out, whatever. Do some shit. And on top of that, be like, oh, where's your response back? Or but whatever. Let's, let's be like, Drake okay. didn't charge let's, up. Let me, let what did Drake play. say to Meek Mill? He's like, you got 20. He said it in the song. You got 24 hours. He's like, you got 24 hours, whatever, to respond, right? Yeah. Boom. Megan Thee Stallion, that whole song, it was a song by her, it was her song, obviously this and Nicki. You know, it's like a song, the rollout, the music video, Nicki responded within 48 hours. There's some bullshit. Well, it wasn't the best response, but she still responded. So I think that's where the 20, the clock time countdown shit applies. I think here, it doesn't necessarily apply. I don't think it really necessarily applies. It's a different but situation. Now, now, let me tell you this. What if Kendrick had more, but Metro just didn't let him because the majority of the album was um, not specific to him, but obviously people are tying it to him. Now, that, those first two tracks was Future saying, fuck you, bitch. The whole album right. was about Drake. Right, yeah. right. But there was never any I get what you mean. Out, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think the whole album was about Drake. I think the whole album was about Drake. All right, so I'll say this, though. I want this on record. If he makes a song and only this is future, yo, Vic, you hear my mouth. <laughs> yeah, I'm Whoa, coming, no diddy. I'm coming. Wow, it's crazy. I don't want your I'm mouth. I'm coming in here shirtless. I'm talking so much shit. Because for you to diss the trap nigga and not the lyrical rapper is going to make me hot. Yo, you know how much I love Drake? You know how many times I've lived in a 4 a.m. in fucking Toronto? You know how many times I listen to 5 a.m. in Calabasas? Bro, I fucking love rapping Drake. That nigga gets me hard. That nigga gets me wavy. No I be ditty. feeling like that nigga when he starts rapping. <laughs> Just for this nigga to diss the R&B uh, singing, trapping nigga and not the lyrics. Nah, bro. Nah. Listen, right now, confirm now, uh, breaking news. There is some new Drake dropping Friday. Let's go. But. Let's go. It's uh, it's on, I think, BF, BFB, the, the Pac-Man. The fat rapper that's like funny. Yeah, Peter Pac-Man has yeah. a Drake verse. Yeah, he's like that's a, he's like a, he has like amazing punchlines. That's incredible. With Rio, the young OG, I think he's in jail right now. Free Rio, right? God bless. And Drake's on it, and the song's called Olympic Shit Talking. <laughs> so that's coming out Friday. Okay. So I'll tell you this much. I hate, he, I hate that we have to wait till Friday because of the whole drop shit. 
if that verse doesn't talk about uh, Kendrick, it's going to fall on deaf ears. Yeah. Strategically, strategically, Drake should have taken his dad's phone. He should have done a lot of shit, right? Should have taken his dad's phone. He might not have to let this verse drop. Or if this verse is dropping, we're going to get the Kendrick verse or song, whatever, either tonight, middle of the night, tomorrow. It's going to have to happen before this, this Friday. Or... Maybe on this verse, he's going to update it and give... But why would he give BFD, the Pac-Man, the Kendrick verse? I mean, he could make it happen. Somehow. That's interesting. What what I do like about this, though, in this new era of hip-hop, bro, is like... I love how you don't know who's going to work with who. There's no more, like, levels to... Like, oh, this person's here, so they get this type of verse. Yeah. Where it's like, you have people just... You don't we don't know what we're going to get anymore, and that's so cool. The fact that BFB has a, a Drake verse is the craziest it's shit. It's crazy. Me. That's amazing. It's random. That's, so, like, that's it's, insane. Because so I feel like nowadays, it's really... It's relationship building and just who, who just... Fuck. Like, for example, like he also has a Wiz Khalifa verse. And I think that shit's so cool just because Wiz fucks with him. I think that's so cool about hip-hop these days now. But I also think, like, when it comes to Drake, this is very on-brand with him. This is why I respect Drake. I cannot like the way you do certain shit, but I'll respect you for this. You really make an effort to find newer artists. Because you're right, back in the day, who the fuck is giving Rio a fucking uh, a bar? Who's giving any of these niggas a bar? Like, these niggas are not on my level. Like, Jay-Z, was, Jay-Z refused to give Joe Budden a fucking bar. <laughs> Bro, that <laughs> shit has. That was why they beefed. That was what the beef was stemming from. Like, bro, I'm on your label. Why are you being an asshole about this? And but that's really what it is. Like, and then he literally remixed it, did it, made it better, and dissed this nigga on the remix. And so I think he took his whole verse off the Pump It Up remix too. So that's why I'm like, I, ha- I have to respect these. I have to respect Drake because he doesn't care about where your status is. It's the quality of the music. It's the sound you have. The fucking um for bat for bats nigga mm-hmm. hopped on he signed his a Drake. yeah sign a drake now like drake is such a visionary that the idea of where you stand and the ecosystem of music doesn't matter to him it's about where this music what this music sounds like and where it could go and i have to i have to applaud him for that because i think you're right like there are new there are people now doing it more easily it's a new thing in rap like yeah. Wiz khalifa willing to give up a bar um he was also on, he made a song with Brent. Like, there's just niggas, you're like, bro, you would never make a song with these people back in the day. That was shit. But now you are. Like, you don't care. And I cool. love that. Regardless, if he does drop something on Friday with uh, with this track or whatever, and he does say something to Kendrick, Kendrick's responding. The next day. He's responding. The next day. Kendrick's you gotta put responding. the camera on you when you're talking about Kendrick, because... My bad. He'd be Ken- scared. Kendrick's gonna shoot us. Scared. You're the one who calls him out. For real, you're the, you're the one team nah, you're Drake. Scared, nigga. You're the one team but we Drake. We gotta show him all the faces in, you're the in the one studio. Team Drake. I'm, I, I say Kendrick. He's got to see all the faces. I'm rocking with this Kendrick. You basically been calling that nigga bitch Drake. for years. I'm, I'm rocking with Kendrick. <laughs> I respect it. I respect it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh my Listen, god. Listen, Kendrick's responding. Not nah, he is. Kendrick's responding. I think that this Kendrick's back. I, at least I pray to God he is. I hope. He, I think he's gonna drop a, a project. Yeah, we're getting K dot. Yeah. Um, before we move on to why try, we want to check out right here update with Diddy. There's a new footage that just came out, I guess, of Diddy pacing back and forth outside. Yeah, because then his crib get ran through by yep. like, the SWAT. Yep. Let's Cribs. see. Cribs. Cribs. Oh Cribs. God. Oh my God. It's outside the airport. Can you put the speaker up? I heard. I think there's an audio. I guess you wonder what's going to happen next, Diddy. And then. He said, I guess, what did he say? I guess you're going to wonder what was going to happen next, did he? Yeah. Go back. I want to hear exactly what he said. Yeah, well, let's see the beginning. I guess you wonder what's going to happen next, did he? <laughs> I, I guess you wonder what's going to happen next, did he? You know what confuses me about Damn. this? Damn. Is that people are saying, right, that the feds, whatever, um, had this already all planned out. If that was the case, how did they allow that that airplane to take off? I can't speak on fully how that shit works, but I'm pretty sure private jets have their own like they have their own rules and regulations. Yeah. They they have to call to tower and shit. To yeah, ask for permission to take to off leave. and leave. Yeah, so that means if the feds did know 
and were planning this, they never bothered to do that, which that, doesn't make yeah, sense. Yeah, that's the only thing I can think of. But, but there's no way to fight that, that though. Exactly. Listen, Cat Williams called the it out. side and the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other side. Period. Period. All of these uh, big deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you did or is it whoever Cat Williams you fault? is. T.G. Jakes, any of them. The, all, every, it might be Vic's fault because Vic's the reason be Cat Williams sat down with That's this all. <laughs> and, 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 and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. The truth is the light. That's been the energy for the year. Um, the year just started. <laughs> bro, the year just started. You know, it, it's crazy. Um, also, definitely wanted to highlight, uh, there's a new Eminem album officially dropping. Really? Uh, yes. We have Dr. Dre talking about album, it which is right here. Shout out to the Eminem fans. They always tap in. Coming out this year. And he's... Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I, and I actually talked to him, and he said it was okay for me to make that announcement right here on this show. Ah. Oh, wow. Nice. So he has an album coming out. I've got songs on it, and it's 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 fire. I'm actually going to hear the entire album for the first time tomorrow. Yeah. And he holds his music close to his chest, so yeah, I haven't heard everything. I haven't even heard everything complete that I've done, but I'm going to hear it, and he's putting out an album this year. Oh, so you actually haven't heard, because I know you typically are very careful yeah. with your stuff. So. Yeah, I'm hands on. There's things that I have to mix that I've done, but I get a chance to hear the album in its entirety. So, the album is basically damn near done. What's Eminem has a that? new album. This year is powerful. Yeah. We got, we're getting a new Eminem album, right, with Dr. Dre on it. That's some classic You think 50's link up. on it? You see how 50 smiling? Was there. 50 yeah, was laughing, sorry. and he was like, oh, he's going to try to get on it. He said there, so he, they might randomly get him on it. Um, Because 50's yeah. on Dr. Dre's album. Dr. Dre has an album, I think, with Snoop Dogg, and 50 Cent's on that, and that's dropping this year as well. Um, we have Kanye dropping supposedly two more albums, right? Vultures 2. It's already done, isn't it? Yeah. yeah two and three. And Drake. He's going, he's going direct. That's Drake's shit, probably see. dropping an album this year. Again, he's going to have to, right? He's probably going to let J. Cole I, drop. I, I hope I, not. I don't think Drake's dropping an album. I hope Drake just promotes Party and let's Cole drop. I think he might drop, drop another Scary Hours. Nah, I think Drake's gonna drop an album, guys. Because dropping an album. What I want from Drake this time, because we talked about this, move away from the girl shit. I want real lyricism. I want him to go back to that bag of talking about his life where he's at. Now's the time with what Kendrick's time. doing. Kendrick's probably gonna drop an album, and he needs some time to do that. I would have liked that. I think Drake Kendrick's gonna drop an album. When the most the stepper shit drop? Almost two years kind ago, but I think it was yeah, a year ago. ago. Yeah, it hasn't been a year and a half ago. Yeah, I don't know. that's kind of that's real short. I think, it was, I think it was towards the end of twenty. 22. He can't be taking to five years off again, bro. Talking like this, I'll oh. go off every day. But also, too, didn't Kendrick leave TDE? Yes. I think yeah, he he's, independent yeah. Yeah, so he's independent now. So since he's independent now, he can really just maneuver how he wants. Drop I mean, whenever. He was like TDE was restricting, yeah. Type sh type shit. He could drop whenever the fuck he wants. We got the J Cole album coming. It's an amazing year for music right now. Um, you know, Diddy's in jail or not in jail yet. Um, probably on his way to jail. We shall see what's gonna happen with that. But no, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy year. But uh, speaking of, you know, artists, uh, New England's own is in the building. Why try? One of my favorite artists to ever come out of New England is visiting today. Oh, love, bro. I need to give you a hug for that. He, he's here <laughs> and he's a phenomenal talent. One of my favorites to ever come out of the East Coast, especially in recent years. Uh, sit over here. Why try? Um, we have always shown him love. He's he's definitely a Club Ambition member, you know, Without even necessarily needing to be physically here, you know, his spirit's always been respected and appreciated. You know, round of applause for Why Try. Listen, talk to the people real quick just about your story as Yo. when it comes to your music and how your journey started, you know. Uh, you want, like, from the beginning, beginning? Yeah, from the beginning, from the beginning. Shit. Uh, beginning in a quick way. Why well, try? Started off dancing in high school. Um, I danced for a very well-known company called Funk Phenomenon. I met, they were on America's Best Dance Crew, season three or something like that. Oof. I was in that company for a little bit. Um, got hurt, had knee surgeries. Went to college, started making clothes. That was cool until I started seeing where fashion was going. Couldn't catch up with that. Then I had a friend who was a rapper, and. Uh, one day I was just like we was on the train. I was like, "Yo, I thought I want to give this rap shit a shot." And he was like, "Bro, do it." And then wow. now we here. When did shit. you record your first verse ever? Why well, try? 
bro. So I recorded my first verse. High school, right? So um, my mentor is this dude named Acrobatic, mm. legendary MC. Like, he was on Jam 94.5. Okay. He, like, he teaches at UMass Boston right now. Shout out Acrobatic. I was just with him the other day, nice. giving him his flowers. And he came to my high school, and he did, like, a rap class type thing, right? And I would go because I had my first knee surgery in high school, so I was going there because my homie Reggie Hugh was in the class. So he was like, bro, just pull up. We'll hit. We'll go home after that on the train. So I'm like, all right, word, cool. Calm. So I was in there, and uh, eventually I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to join. I wrote my first verse terrible, and I was really bad for a long time. Damn. To the point where, like, at the end of the year, we we made a song, right? We made, like, a mixtape, and then we performed one of the songs for the whole the whole school. Yeah. My homie Reggie did his verse. Everyone was like, oh, shit, yo. Ah, ah, ah. My homie Angel did his shit. Boom. Ah, ah, ah. I did my John. It was fucking crickets. Yeah. Fucking crickets, bro. Damn. And yeah, so it was a uh, it was interesting. It's been an interesting ride so far when it comes to the rap shit. So right now, you know, for those who don't know, uh, you're gonna find out right now. But you might know and didn't even know this whole time that this was the man behind it. But you know, over 500 million people worldwide play Fortnite. Right, it's one of the biggest games in the history of gaming. And New England's own Why Try is in Fortnite. Big threes, big threes. So yes, talk about to the people how you're in Fortnite. In what way, and talk about the feedback of how now it's impacted your career after. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. It's it's these two weeks have been kind of crazy for me, bro. Um, so pretty much, I worked on so Fortnite has lobby music, right? It's music that's in the game that you unlock. You can play in Fortnite festival. You can play in your lobby. Yeah. Now this new season called Myths and Mortals. I worked on the lobby music for Hades, which is a song called You're All Mine featuring me and Spencer Satilio from Periphery. Mm. Periphery is like, Periphery is kind of like, they are the new, I, I want to say this, they're like the new Linkin Park mm, in a okay, sense. Okay. And Spencer is one of the biggest, he's like one of the biggest acts in Screaming Metal right now. Okay. So shout out Periphery and shout out Spencer. And uh, yeah, I feel like I'm starting to see the impact of it. Like recently, now that it's out and now that's been catching steam, I'm starting to get some really cool things coming in. But just, yo, just seeing the fan love, bro, it's been crazy. Like people like subscribing to the YouTube, me communicating with fans, getting their thoughts and stuff, and just seeing everybody coming in talking about the character and just the season. People are saying this is the best season of Fortnite ever. So how did Fortnite? When did Fortnite reach out to White Try? And like how how did this happen? Like this whole idea of like. Oh, obviously Fortnite makes music and they select artists and it's amazing music when you hear it on the loading screen. But what's the behind the scenes? Like what was your first interaction with anyone from was it Epic Games? Who owns Epic, Fortnite? Epic, Epic Games? Games and Disney now. And Disney, yes. And Disney, the Disney partnership, yeah. So it's crazy. So what was that first interaction with them ever? Or how did you reach out? Like what was the how does it work? Bruh. So I'm I'm gonna keep it funky. They found me on Reddit. Wow. So yeah, they found me on Reddit. Um I used to do this series. So I was doing this series for a while. It was called, I think you may, you may have seen it, but it was like video games my song should be in. 100%, yeah. While I was dressing up as characters and just doing animations with a green screen. The WWE then one. I did, like, I did uh, WWE, I did 2K, I did NFL, I think I did uh, Resident Evil. So after I was posting those things on social media, I would go to the Reddit communities and I would just drop the videos in there to see what people thought. Some people fucked with it, some people didn't, some people, it was whatever. Yeah, I yeah. just got that love. And then one day, I'm never going to forget this day. I'm going to remember this for the rest of my life. I was at this buffet by myself, yeah. right, eating some eating some wings and some clams, <laughs> cooling. I get an email. I check the email. It says, "Hey, I'm so and so. I represent. I'm part of this production company, and I am a represent a representative of Epic Games. We found your stuff, and we would like to bring you in for this project we're working on." I looked at that shit. I put my phone down because I thought it was spam, bro. I'm like, there's no way. Yeah. So I go on with my day, and then they follow up with me the next day. Like, hey, do you still have time to check this out? And I'm like, oh, shit, this is, this is legit. Yeah. And then uh, I get on a call. We figure it out. We set a date. I'm in a Zoom. I'm meeting with, I'm meeting with the team, and I'm asking them, like, yo, so how'd you guys find me? And they were like, to be honest, we found you on Reddit. And I was like, what do you mean by that? Well, I was on Reddit one day and I th saw your stuff pop up because fans were sharing your stuff. I checked you out and then um, I sent it to the team and then I found out you was from New England. And he was like, oh, well, 
I was also from New England at a point. So like I think this is this is really cool for me too. Wow. So I sent this your stuff out to the team and they thought you were the guy for the job. That's fire. And then we just made it happen. So then how long from that process, like how long ago was that? Like what was that that moment of That was the day before Christmas, bro. Wow. Yeah, day before Christmas. Talking about a gift from from Santa. Type shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's when they hit me up and then I had to wait a little bit. Two weeks passed, and we had the meeting, and then boom. Damn. So then from that point, right, Christmas Day, Christmas Eve, what was that point of you creating the song? Like, did they tell you what to do? Anything so, that you can reveal? Did they tell you, like, oh, make the song about this, et cetera? You, we have this plan, Hades, yeah. you know? Because I'm assuming at that time, the the Greek and uh, the mythology theme for the season wasn't revealed, right? Because nah. they surprised it every time, right? Nah, yeah, they surprised it every time. So pretty much what happened was they hit me up. Uh, once I was in the meeting, when I was in the meeting with them, they presented me a whole <clears throat> pitch deck. Like, this is the vision. Mm. This is the vision. This is what we need. This is what we're looking for. And then I just took all that. And once I saw it, I was like, okay, I got it. Yeah. Went to the crib, did some demos, and I sent it out. They're like, yo, this is perfect. Yeah. So after that, it was just doing edits and drafts. And then they were like, yo, we love this, but we need some do some more things. So they sent me somewhere. I can't say where, but they sent me somewhere to do Lu- it all Illuminati, out. Illuminati building. Yeah, they yeah. sent me somewhere to do it all out. And... I did it, and then right, right when we like finished everything, they were like, "Yo, this is gonna drop on this day." Yeah. Now I'm like, "Damn, let's go!" Like we need, like y'all don't even have everything yet. They were like, "Nah, bro, trust me, it's gonna drop." So in my mind, I'm not thinking it's real yet, right? Yeah. Three days before, they hit me and they're like, "Yo, so we got everything confirmed. Everything's gonna be loaded up. It drops on March 8th." Yeah. You, um, you gonna be level 100 on the battle pass, and I'm like, "Okay, cool. Out of what?" They were like out of a hundred. I said, wait, wait. <laughs> so you telling me this is like the main thing, like, yo, this skin or this like Hades, the character, yeah, is gonna be so beloved and so big, like you're gonna yeah. see. And then my song is 95. Wow. So you unlock the song, and then once you get the song, you unlock the skin. Wow. Type shit. So it was just like surreal to see. Like when you play, when you start Fortnite, the cover of no build is Hades. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you watch some of the YouTube ads and stuff, it's the Hades character. Yeah. So I thought it was going to be Zeus because it's Zeus. But yeah. they were like, nah, Hades is going to be the guy. Holy shit. So, like, it's it's surreal because I, as days went on, I started to realize how big of a deal I guess it is because I knew Fortnite was big, but it wasn't until one of my homies was like, bro, you don't understand. Like, this isn't just America. No, it's this global. Is, this is global. It's like, worldwide. this is mm-hmm. the biggest game of all time. Yeah. As a, until, until Grand Theft Auto comes out, Fortnite has no comp like it's no, the, yeah. the game so yeah bro it's been a crazy ride and it's only been two weeks damn and then now oh, is this a thing that you think you're gonna continue a relationship with them like it more, making yeah, more music I hope more... so I, yo hey yo epic Disney I'm yo listen I told you before <laughs> if you need me but if you need me again I'm gonna say it right now if y'all need me again hit me let's get it I'm like bro it was cool I, like because of this I re- you know what PAX East is Sounds familiar. So PAX East. East is a really big gaming convention. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they, yeah, yeah, see, my man knows. Yeah. And they they just had me come out and do interviews for fans and, and cosplayers. And like I interviewed the VP of Atari. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So I'm doing like side quests like that right yeah, now. Yeah. So it's the tightest <laughs> shit ever, bro. It's the tightest shit ever. That's fire. You know what I mean? That's probably gonna keep happening. Yeah, and I, I hope so, because I like this is something, video games is something I've always been passionate about, but to be able to combine my two skill sets into one. And also, it's kind of as if, like, it's like a new blueprint. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, this is like a whole new lane where, like, yeah, it's like artists can do sync stuff, but now it's like I'm kind of carrying a character yeah. to a degree. You know what I'm saying? And that's tied as hell. Like, it was when I was doing the interviews, I had some fans come up to me and they were geeking out that I did the soundtrack. And I didn't understand why, but then I realized, oh, to like, those type of people, this is like the same as them meeting their favorite rapper or them meeting their favorite character yeah. when they meet voice actors or when they meet like, oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? So It's, it's like a uh, Comic-Con type shit. Type, sh- type shit, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So even that, like that's that's conversations I've been having now. Yeah, you're where, probably going like, to have to start getting tables at comic like, and shit. Yeah, or like even I might, hopefully it goes through, but I might be doing something, I might be doing a show for PAX East next year. Oh, nice. Or like Comic Con and anime, anime Con stuff like that. So like, I can see him doing that. We went to Comic Con. Yeah. I can see like him getting on a table with other maybe other Fortnite yeah, bro, creatives yeah, and being bro, like, "Hey, put, yo, I'm put me next to Hades, fucking Green Lantern in, in the DC movies, <laughs> shit like that. I want shit like that. You, you know, know what I'm saying? saying? They were char- how much were they charging in a while? Do you remember how much they're charging for like photos and stuff? Like yeah, people, it's like two hundred, two fifty. Yeah, it's crazy. So for the bigger ones, yeah, for no- it was usually around like fifty dollars to a hundred dollars. 
they did also, and then the signatures too, right? Like, yeah, signatures. Crazy. There's packs like it's like 150 for a photo signature, and then like an actual photo with them. Yeah, so wow. it's, it's you got started getting your prices now, bro. Yo, bro, you <laughs> know what I'm saying? So I'm trying, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get in, but also I just, bro, I feel like why I love this opportunity so much is, like you said, you see me grow for a long time. Oh yeah. And independently going hard and de- not independently and I've done so much with like without management without I don't, like without distribution deals without all these things that I feel like artists need or feel like they need to like get these big yes. moments and like you can go really far out the mud bro listen you are why try as a manifestation you know when it comes to New England artists and people want to you know like oh no one's showing me love or like I can't make it I can't do it if you really put in the work and the effort yourself and you are an independent artist out there in the world, this is a manifestation right here. This is an example of how you can do it, right? He was love, making man. posts about, yo, I make, I can make songs that, or I think those songs are already created, right? You already had these songs. Yeah, you're the like, song, the songs like, yo, are these, songs, these songs could match with this type of Fam, uh, like, video game. I literally won't, And then I, look at now you're really in a video game with shit. original music in a video game. Like it's, it's like full circle. Like he manifested it, he did it. Put it out into the world, and not only did it get like a regular sync, because that happens all the time. Like people get their music on NBA 2K, et cetera. I think United Masters was doing that with Steve mm-hmm. Stout, with a lot of artists uh, for years, mm-hmm. like recently, because he has like a deal with the NBA. So like a lot of people were like getting syncs on NBA commercials or NBA um, video games. But to get an original character and like actual screen music and the whole placement and actually you know talk to actual execs at this major co- company is a different level. Yeah, bro, bro, you, you it's, did it. It's it, it's 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 surreal because again, like I think this is just a blueprint, not only just for like rappers, but for New England, bro. Yeah. Like this is like I feel like I brought a W, a crazy W back to New England and or even Boston, bro. And I did this, bro. I, I've never like I don't even have a Boston Music Award nomination. I never won shit or been a part of like the corporations and stuff. And now I get to bring this, this type of amazing. level back is 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 super crazy. And I just want to really bang into people's heads bro is i think we live in the era of hip-hop or just music now where it's creativity over everything 100 like it's about your creativity and your resources and anything else bro fuck it you don't need it yeah you don't need it and yeah. well, it's gonna come to you yeah and if you got the talent behind the creativity you know you're gonna last absolutely so you got man. the talent you know you're very talented now, you've been selling out your own shows for a while you. you've been doing a lot of amazing you know performative entrances you already know how to work the crowd you already know how to you know brand yourself you're doing merch you've been doing merch for a while thank you bro. so you're doing things that people independently need to get the ball rolling and start doing and you've been doing it for a while and you're already now getting this you know cosign what's the plan now this year for why try are you going to roll out any more music any projects oh hell off of the yeah hype of this? yo what i got shit to play you after this baby oh, yeah. boy listen the new yo <laughs> we can play some shit right now huh we can play some shit right now if you want to like preview some some you know what you I'm know saying? what's crazy put the bluetooth in type hell shit yeah. you know what i'm saying me, you know what i got this new record actually i'm working on right now I think it's gonna be the next John. And I'm very. It's called. Uh, it's called Lights Down. So put your Bluetooth on, and you okay. should be able to find it. I think it's gonna be Roadcaster Two. It should be popping up because this year for me, it's gonna musically, bro, it's really just about um, experimenting and pushing my sound. I have an album I'm working on, finally rolling out. But on top of that, I'm also working on like, is it which one? You okay? Oh uh, no, give I think. Me a sec, give me a sec. Oh, you gonna you gonna make it discoverable? Yeah. It's yeah. gonna say Rollcaster Two. You'll see in a Ty- second. Oh, Rollcaster Two. Word. It's also just I'm really about pushing my sound that I have right now, the alternative crunk stuff. Yeah. But also sharpening my craft and exploring other sounds. So I have like this dance record right now that I'm very happy about because it's giving like Soho high fashion runway vibes. Okay. And, bro, like, play some of it. Don't don't play too much of it. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Give people a little taste. No diddy. <laughs> Come talk to me. Come talk to me. Baby, come talk to me. Give it a drop. Oh, I try. Let's go. Baby, come around real quick with the lights down. Once you talk to the kid, make a pipe down. Pretty moon, girl, you looking like a wife. Wow. How you moving for the kid? Need you right now. Up in the function, all up on my body in the denim when she rubbing the red dress, poke it 
out, let me see you work it out Plotted on your nigga, baby girl, I know you figured out Push it, throw it back, drop it on the kid, I don't know how to act I'm alone, I'm gonna put up to the function, loving every minute, but you know I need a I need a dark skin, light skin, red bone, baby, shake that ass, make the boys go crazy Dark skin, light skin, you gotta, you gotta, we go off answer Make the boys, make the boys say dark skin, light skin, red bone, baby, shake that ass, make the boys go crazy Dark skin, light skin, red bone, baby, three, two, one, let's go Hard. So it's like I'm I'm doing Hard. stuff like that because I, now it's <laughs> round like, of applause, round of applause, uh, real quick. <laughs> now when it comes to me, song here with the music, bro. This has taught me to like now I'm making music and when I make the music, I'm trying to envision where I can put it before I even make it. Yeah. Like where am I gonna see it? Can I see it in the television show? Can I see it in the movie? Can I see it in yeah. this background thing? And I've been going from there. And now because I've been doing that, I feel like I've been making records that are uh really just like like, like, did you hear uh, that new Bodmon record I put out? Yeah, yeah. Bro, that needs to be in, like, a the spinoff of Top Boy or some, like, I'm trying. You know what I'm saying? I've just been trying to figure out and just really push that and just really, like, make stuff that is true to me. But I know if I can envision it in these areas, it's going to be true to other people. And since I've been doing that, things have been just connecting. Bro, you're hitting it on the head, bro. You, you are really accomplishing, you know... Your dreams, a lot of people's dreams, and you are you are a living example of you know what to follow. You're That's doing love, it the right man. way, and I'm really proud of you, bro. Thank you, bro. Genuinely, I'm, it's just I crazy to see. That. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's long awaited. You're getting your flowers, you know, and it's really just starting. Yo, trust me, yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? This shit, yeah, bro. Like, you still cooking up? Like this is one <laughs> yeah. percent of where you you about to be at, and maybe 05 percent of where you about to be at. You know, after all this, like this is um. It's, it's crazy, bro. It, it, it's crazy to see, and, and like even that song right there, like it reminded me of like a a hit song right now that already exists. Fucking um, the Yeet bro, breathe, breathe. I love, oh yeah, I, I, I love, love Yeet, bro. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Dun, 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 dun. So I could see like that that sound, and like I could see that like a runway show. I could see that at a legal freak off party. You know what I'm saying? Not a Diddy a party, but I could see that like with those type of functions. It gives that type of vibe. Like you could play that like at a rave. Or like one of those like dark yeah. basement parties. Mm -hmm. You know I'm what I'm saying? I'm gonna play y'all one more. I'm gonna play y'all yeah, one yeah. off the album. This is my favorite off the album. Okay, say no more. So it's called Clitty Shaker. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the Clitty Shakers wow. worldwide. Yeah, you know okay. I'm saying DJ Clitoris. Yeah, they used to call me that. That's wild. Cause I'm making like uh, this. Uh, this is why Dima's alternative crunk. This is my sound. I'm very just excited yeah. to put it and give it to the world. So. Okay, I'm back with it. Feeling vicious, but you're feeling vicious. Neck missing, toe tipping like you're never missing. Been dancing with the grip, my brain is taking vision. Rock out more, profit sign my name. I'm trying to go, you need to know. Who the put my dick in the top explode? I'm a sinner, pussy. So yeah, bro, I'm just trying to like push my creativity, yeah, push the back. sound, and really just make stuff that not only I'm proud of, but continue to make stuff for Why Try that is going to like stand on its own. Oh, I yeah. don't want the, I don't want there to be no confusion when you hear Why Try or see Why Try. Like obviously there's gonna be comparisons and boxes I'll be in, but I just really want I'm just trying my best to be an artist that like it's like when people hear it, they're like, oh no, nah, this is this guy. This mm -hmm. is no one else. Do you have a release date for anything, or is that still being worked on? After, after with everything going on, bro, there's a lot of like cool situations coming in. So I've been taking my time going through stuff. So I'm, yeah, I'm definitely putting stuff out during the summer before this. Like before the summer ends, there's gonna be new Watch Try music for sure. Okay, for sure. Okay, mass date, and I ain't got no date yet right now. And another thing I think is really cool is now I'm starting to understand the beauty of being independent. Yeah, where you can get these this this level type shit, and no one can tell you what the fuck to do. Like I'm still, it's me and my team still figuring out. Yo, we're gonna move like this, or we're gonna do things like that, and just juggling along. Like no one's around telling me and be like, yo, you gotta do it like this or X. Oh yeah, because like, easily if you were on a label, I can see them being like, hey, we just got that Fortnite Disney uh, song music situation. You cannot drop a song called Clitty Shaker. Type shit. You know, you know what I'm saying? saying? The kids, the kids ain't, you got the kids on your side, you can't you can't drop yeah. no Clitty Shaker. It's like shit. you're independent, you can do what the fuck you want. Type shit. So just Cause they would have easily pulled that. Hey! 
Type no Clutty Shaker happening in this building. <laughs> we just got the Disney deal. They want to fuck it up. Yeah, man. It's so. like, you can do whatever the fuck you want. You're, you're multiverse. Like, you're very, you know, you can be on Fortnite, but you can do some punk shit where it's like straight up fucking yeah, Clutty Shaker. You know what I'm saying? That's, I think that's what really appealed to Epic Games when they approached me. I think they liked the the appeal of me having, being like a damn near an enigma. Yeah. Where like I have different forms and yeah, bro. Like it was just, it was, it's cool as shit. It's cool as shit that they really took a shot on me too. Cause they were like, Hey, when I had the comments, they didn't look at me as like a little local artist. They were like, nah, bro. Like we see you the same way we see Spencer and Spencer's doing the PlayStation center in May. Wow. So it's like, it's, it was a level of respect and a level of, of understanding that I'm forever great. Going to be grateful for when it comes to their team. Wow. So no, I yeah, love that. Bro. I love that. And then when it comes to, you know, our people are going to see this, and you don't have to discuss fully. You don't have to detail it fully, but they're going to think, damn, why tries on Fortnite? He must have got a, a million-dollar check. <laughs> but what is, what was it, was it something, a situation financially where you would recommend people working with them? Like, you weren't, obviously you're independent, but you weren't dicked around. Like, they didn't fuck you over. Like, it nah, was a well-done situation. Nah, I think they, they took care of me. Yeah. I, I'm going to say they, take, they took care of me, and I'm uh, grateful for that. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's why you got the Lamborghini outside. You know <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I'm just fucking around. I'm just fucking around. Shit, fucking you know what's around. funny? You want to know what my, my dream car is? What's your dream car? It's a Kia EV6. Mm, I'm why? a simple nigga, bro. Why? Why that one? Does bro, it, does it I, look you nice know what it is? I like tech cars. I like techie cars. I'm gonna look it up. And I don't know if you knew this, but the new, uh, the, the the new interior the, the designer for Kia is the. The one he's the old designer for Audi. Mm. Okay. So it's like, yeah, do you know? Did, did, did you know this, Mark? Smooth little John. You yeah. know what I mean? Did you know this, Mark? Give me the yeah. military green, John. Yeah. Over here. Yes, yeah, sir, bro. I'm cool. I'm up. I'm straight. I'm, no one's telling me shit. Once we were, I get we were that, talking no about that uh, recently. I remember I told you like I'm like I feel like all these cars be looking like Euruses and shit, like Lamborghini Euruses oh, yeah, now. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Look like something out of Tron. I'm with it. No, that's hard. I'm with all type of shits, bro. Cause me for real, like if I was to get one of like the. The Corvettes or the McLarens. I'm like, bro, them shits is too low to the ground. You can't even get in those drones. Bro, reach out to Kia. Do a Kia commercial oh, song now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> get that voice on Kia. We'll send Kia you the back. EV for free as long as you do the the, the song to the commercial Yo, that we're going to drop man. next month. Yeah, you know what I'm shit, saying? Bro. And it's just, it's yeah. another cool thing about this situation, bro, is showing me how much things are actually feasible, bro. Because again, I'm just. I'll, you did that show on your own. Yeah, that. And I'm just, bro, I'm a kid from like Everett, Mass. Like a little city right outside of Boston, bro. So to like. Get this is 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 mind blowing. Anything yeah, I just want to keep it going, bro. I just want to keep it going for me. I want to keep it going for the city. I want to keep it going for New England. I want to keep it going for just the East Coast in general, bro. Because again, Fortnite, they drop a new season every four months, and I thought every skin was supposed to get a song. Only two of us got songs on this season. It was Hades and um, the Water God uh, Ap- 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 I can't say the name correctly. Yeah, and. Yeah, it was crazy. Damn, like, I didn't no know that Medusa limited. didn't get a song. Like, damn, it was just Hades and yeah. Damn. So it was like a big deal. No, that's amazing. And any last words where I try for the people watching, especially New England, Rhode Island, tapping in any independent artists. We have a lot of independent artists that check us out and, and tap in. Any advice for them, you know, la- or last words when it comes to just overall kind of summarizing, you know, your success and the energy you have going on right now and something you might be able to tell them that you maybe would be able to tell yourself looking back years ago, you know, that you know now. Bro, don't be pussy. Post your shit. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't always have to be elite. Be creative with your ideas and understand that your ideas and your IPs has value. Whether you don't know it or the people don't know it, it doesn't matter. Put it into the universe because the right person is going to come across and see it. And you don't know how they're going to see it or when they're going to see it. And you also don't know who's watching. I remember watching, there was this interview with Tyler, right? And he was talking about how he found Rex Orange County on YouTube and bro had like 30 views. Yeah. And he was still watching this shit. Yeah. So it's a. this has really showed me that not only do we not know who's watching, just because your you video or your idea has zero views doesn't mean it's not important. And Bang. that doesn't mean it can't be used. Bang. So post your shit. Don't be pussy. Yeah. Don't be dumb. Believe in yourself yeah. and go crazy. Listen, that's that's why I've been, when I speak to these kids recently, you know, Rhode Island, that's why I've been telling them, except the don't be pussy part. You know, so I don't say that. But I, do, I can't. Maybe I can, one day we'll see. But I do say that, that idea of like, you don't know who's watching. Yeah. Because everyone's focused on the view count, et cetera, blah, 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 blah. 
You never know who's watching. Hey, and just and just also don't be afraid to build something for yourself. Like, bro, look at what you've done over the years, cuz. Yeah. Like, I've known you just, it's been like, what, five years now? Five, six years? Podcasting three, but we've been doing YouTube since 2016, right? 2015. Yeah, I think I met you around 2018. Uh, uh, sophomore year of high school, we started the whole idea, and then we pried towards the end of sophomore, going into junior we started recording. Almost going on 10 years. So like yeah, nine bro. years. And I know I met you since 2018. And when yeah. I met you on 2018, bro, this was this is this was the vision. Now yeah. you got the vision, cuz. You know so it's really just about following the vision, bro. And I'm again, I'm proud of you, dog. And I'm just I'm honored to be here for real. No, thank you, man. Nah, thank I you, appreciate that. Thank you for G. coming through. You know what I'm saying? Sharing your presence. Where can the people find you if they don't have, you know, a lot of people are lazy. They won't check the descriptions. They just might hear it. So if they're hearing and watching, where can they find you on social media? Yo, why try W H Y T R I YouTube? Twitch, goddamn Instagram, Twitter. We got the Discord popping. Come join the Shield. We're running Fortnite matches every night at 9 p.m. This is for old fans, new fans. If you don't play Fortnite, come through and play it. If you don't got the skin, grind. We're gonna help you grind to get the skin off the battle pass. All that jazz. And yeah, bro. Why try? W H Y T R I. New music coming soon. New videos coming soon. And. Join me on this ride because shit is gonna go crazy this summer. I feel like I'm about to have the best summer of my fucking life, bro. Bro, I believe it. I believe it. Look, this year has been a, a crazy year already for the industry, and it's happening locally, regionally with artists like White Tri. So make sure to check them out. I've always given him my call. Oh, I got a show. Yo, yeah, yeah. I got oh, a yeah, show. Promote. Can't Tab Lounge. I'm looking right at you. I'm going to the Clavis show at Can't Tab Lounge in Cambridge, Massachusetts, mm. 426, April 26. I'm going crazy with my man Elos. Now, go cop a ticket because I promise you this is going to be one of the illest sets I do because I just had a brand new idea that I haven't done yet at any of the shows, Ooh. even The Shield. And I promise you it's going to be crazy. So get that stuff before it sells out because it's 100% going to sell out yeah a week almost a week after 4 four twenty. yeah you know what i'm saying so a lot of people might still be high at the show yeah you know what i'm saying and that's a good thing you know round of applause real quick for why try thank you for coming through you know one of the artists who's played his music on the podcast introduction a couple times already so you guys might already have some familiarity with him you dropped you dropped two of my music videos too on the channel yeah that's true you know what i'm saying hey. as well you know what i'm saying oh gee bro i appreciate you remember brother you you, you a member you know what i'm saying you were part dog. of the club already for years so we love you all we love you why try thank you for coming through and Diddy, it's over, buddy. <laughs> we'll see you guys. We'll see you guys next week. They gonna love me for my ambition.